Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all of our fans here at RPG Limit Break. I am Alicell, and first of all, can we give a big shout out to that Secret of Mana Run and uh, Smelly McTroll, and of course, our wonderful host, Bob the Ninja Goldfish. Uh, and we have a couple of donations that have actually come in just shouting out that Secret of Mana Run. Um, the first is from Marnie. Exciting Secret of Mana run. I am really looking forward to the Quest 64 incentives as Q64 is an RPG speedrunning favorite. Thank you so much for that $7 donation. And we have another $5 from Tiny Tim. Hey all, been an amazing Secret of Mana run. Well done, Smelly McTroll. Really, really enjoyed it. Shout outs to the one and only Bob. You are my friend, are a legend, and it is an honor to work with you for such a great cause. Cheers. <laughs> but right now we are getting ready for this Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep final mix and we are ready to go and I'm going to actually throw it over to the runners. Hello everybody. Hello. Hey. Hello. Welcome. This is Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep final mix HD all stories critical <laughs> difficulty <laughs> level one. It's a it's as hard as we can get. We're going to do everything. It's going to be great. And I'm surrounded by some Kingdom Hearts royalty over here. We've got the wonderful Jay Hobbs. Hello. Like Violin, who you'll see run KH1 later this week. Like, and Sonic, who uh, made most of the route you're going to see in <laughs> bits and pieces. So. Legend in speedrunning. <laughs> in yeah. Kingdom Hearts speedrunning. Like, this is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, we have a lot to get through. And let's just do it. Critical difficulty, as hard as we can get. Time starts, uh, we'll do three, two, one, go. All right, so three, two, one, go. Ooh, all right. All right, so Birth by Sleep's main gimmick is that there are three playable characters. They all visit the same levels, but they have different enemies, different bosses, different encounters, everything like that. We have Terra, Ven, and Aqua over here. We're going to do all of them. We're going to do Terra first because I may have to uh, load a safety save for this guy, but we'll get to mm. that when we get there. Also, we least have a good pacing of this run to, to start with Terra and uh, end with Aqua eventually. <laughs> yep. So there are some orbs on screen. Don't worry too much about that for the moment. What I want you to focus on is the bottom left-hand corner because that's going to be where our bread and butter in this run is made. You can see we have X to do just a normal attack, and then we have our commands, the sliding dash, the quick blitz, the stun edge, everything you see on screen. Commands in Birth by Sleep are how you do all your normal RPG stuff. It's how you use items, it's how you use magic, it's how you use your special attacks. Everything like that is governed by commands. And these commands, they level up as you use them. You can combine them together to create stronger commands. Everything we do in this entire run is going to be built on that. And you also see right above that, as we do attacks, a meter goes up, and we get finishers based on that meter. And some other things we'll get to later. Those are pretty good orbs. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> that was very good orbs. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I feel like sub two is good. That was 120. <laughs> uh, sub one is what we're generally sub trying one? to go okay. for. But, uh, well, yeah. I'm bad, so <laughs> <laughs> my standards are a little different. But the commands are the our primary thing we're going to be focusing on, especially with Terra. Each character has a major gameplay mechanic that everything in the roots kind of built around. Terra's all about the command. It's all about we need really powerful commands for the end game. And we might sabotage ourselves earlier to get those commands when we really need them. So important menu here to put on EXP Zero. And now we need to talk about another main mechanic. You'll see uh, with the HP bar in the bottom right, there's also a blue bar that says D-Link. D-Links are the summons of this game, essentially. And what they do is they replace your command deck with the commands of a character that you are summoning. And it also gives you some special abilities, like Ven will allow us to attack quicker once he levels up. It replaces your finisher with something else like that, which is pretty cool. And they also randomly level up. As we <laughs> defeat enemies, we're hoping that a little pop of fruit drops from one of these guys, and that will level it up, and that will unlock more commands that we can use and different finishers. 
and everything else like that. And that's where our safety save comes in, because we <laughs> need a level up on Ventus right here, or else we cannot kill the next boss. Come on. So, guys? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we need it. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to tell pretty much immediately after, you know, when enemies uh, die, if they dropped one or not. It'll yeah. kind of almost look a little bit like that big money orb there for a second, but... Uh, Oh, well, nope. Okay, didn't get it. <laughs> Marathon luck. Love yeah. it. So we're going to invalidate our run real quick. But, <laughs> but uh, first, we're going to do all the normal rooting stuff that I would show earlier. As I said, commands uh, dictate everything. The funny thing about commands is you can buy and sell them. Just You can sell any command you have, and as you beat worlds, you unlock more commands that you can buy. And any command you happen to have possession of, you can buy even if you haven't unlocked it from a Moogle yet. So uh, we're going to pick up a bunch of commands in these chests, which are mostly items like potions, ethers, just for the purpose of selling, so that we can get commands we actually want. Zero grab, we do want. We'll use that. Something I really like about this run, too, is that you do use commands not just for combat, but also for movement, like the sliding dash we saw back on the bridge. Mm -hmm. There's even some small advanced tech where you want to try to hit an enemy at the end of your sliding dash mm -hmm. to start moving again more quickly. Uh, you can't always make it happen, but it is a nice, fun little time save to go for. Yep. So this is where we'll invalidate the run real quick. Because <laughs> uh, I have a backup save that's just in this save point here. So we'll do a soft reset yeah, and the... get our Ven drop. Because this is not optional. We need this Ven drop or we legitimately cannot beat the first boss of the run. And the this alternative is... would be just like sitting and grinding in rooms over mm. and over and over again. And it's just as random. So it, it yeah. can take forever. This is a major reset point in all any percent runs. Uh, my split here forever was named 52 minutes of fun. Because that's how <laughs> long I played the game straight without getting a single D-Link. Oh, no. Wow. <laughs> So, yeah, it can be pretty cruel sometimes. And Marathon Luck, what are you going to do? So, pick up that sleeve chest to sell, like, all the other stuff. And we're going to go fight our first boss. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about him after this weird cutscene we can't skip for some reason, Hops? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, we're going to go into that Ven D-Link pretty quickly here in this boss. And uh, like Pestle has said before, sometimes the D-Links come with additional effects, especially as they level up. And Venz is an effect called Attack Haste, which now, if you've noticed how slow the attacks have been up until this point, this should look significantly faster. Uh, to the point where it almost looks like animations are like broken in a way, <laughs> they're, like they're sped up or something. Uh, and that allows us to do way more damage to this boss whenever it's knocked down uh, and just in general. Yeah. And Big it, thing fantastic. to know is um, HP barriers on a lot of these unburst fight. Like right there, I backed off to do a strike raid to hit the HP barrier. When they're close in darkness like that, you can't actually do anything to hit them. And that was a perfect fight. Nice. nice. That's great. You want to intentionally be hit by the charge like I did there, and ideally that will stop the charge and will do the spin attack animation again. And that was RNG to make up for the D-Link, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there are a couple times where you'll take intentional damage in these uh, these character runs. Not too many, but there's a few here and there. So, a couple choices here. We're going to go to Dwarf Woodlands first, because we want to complete the world and unlock some commands to make Castle of Dreams a lot easier. And uh, first use of a shot lock, which is the orange bar in the bottom right. Uh, it's supposed to be used to go in first person and do damage. It can also be used to do this. <laughs> Love it. It just teleports you all the way up there. Yeah, the funny thing about uh, shot locks is they can target things that are not on the screen. And Terra's shot lock here in particular, Sonic Shadow, just uh, rushes Terra to whatever enemy he's attacking. Hello. And uh, you, that means you can use it to attack a guy above you and just kind of teleport. It is not the first time we will defy gravity in this run. We also like using Sonic Shadow because it's two-thirds of Sonic Shadow Silver's name. <laughs> yeah. Also, this is a little sequence glitch. You're not, or sequence break. You're not supposed to, oh. hello. Oh. <laughs> well, Aiming's weird sometimes. We got backup strats. You're supposed oh. to. <laughs> I thought you were going to be too far right suddenly. <laughs> you're not supposed to be able to get up there, but um, we good. And Fission Fire is a pretty powerful command. So we're just going to grab that for ourselves and just put a bunch of crap on our command deck. We don't care about any of this garbage. <laughs> we just want to level it up so it will sell for more. 
Yeah, that's an interesting part about the routing in BBS runs is sometimes you have commands that are actually suboptimal for combat uh, that you have just in order to level up so that way they can be mixed together for more stronger commands later or for, uh, for selling. And uh, unfortunately, because of having to use the backup, Tesla's had to build, get a, a few of those blue uh, drops that are, that fill the D-Link gauge in order to use this Aqua D-Link now. You're going to see a lot of Aqua D-Link with Terra. Uh, and what, fine. what we're looking for here, ideally, is that one of those level up drops, just like we were with Ventus, we actually want two of them. And so far, none of them are happening, which mm. is just wonderful. This is some marathon luck. <laughs> Uh, but Aqua basically just has better commands for dealing with these group groups of just like mob enemies. Uh, there's once we can get some level ups, <laughs> the, the commands are even better. You get access to things like Magnet and Mind Square. Uh, but right now, rough. even just thunders and blizzards. I are could more die useful. here. These guys are very scary. Yeah. But that couldn't have gone much better considering the circumstances. Yeah, nice use of the iframes right there. Mm -hmm. Yep, and there's a shot lock just to do some damage, get some iframes. This is the worst luck I have I ever seen. I know, no <laughs> level drops. That's really unfortunate. Uh, so no, no. <laughs> I thought maybe I got one. No, no. No. Wishful thinking. Yeah, that's terrible. Uh... <laughs> We'll figure it out. Yeah, Maybe. I was going to say, I don't know what the backup is, so that's on you. <laughs> uh, you act like I know what the backup is. So. <laughs> the main backup for uh, this next fight we're going to do is, ideally, we would have a level 2 uh, Aqua D-Link, and we could do some pretty cool stuff to this guy. Instead, we're going to equip a poison, and uh, this fight's not going to be very fun. Mm -hmm. Like, um. so... Sorry? Do we have a couple of seconds for uh, some nice uh, uh, yep, donations? Um, we have $25 from both Field94 and Night Flyer. Thank you so much to that. And we have a $100 donation from Bad Karma. Here's awesome. to some great runs, good friends, and a great cause. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you. So that this fight's not very fun. So poison is going to do a set amount of damage over time. It's the same per difficulty, which means it's pretty good for us. Uh, now is a good time to discuss command styles since we happen to get into one, huh? <laughs> sure. Yeah. So if you see above the command uh, deck down in the bottom left there, you notice there was something that said diamond dust. Uh, basically, as that bar that you're currently seeing kind of the blue bar that's filling up and sometimes fading back down. As that bar continues to increase from you using commands and you using attacks, you will be put into uh, something that's called a command style, basically, whenever the bar fills up. The command style just changes the way that your attacks work. And there's a, a bunch of different ones that we can use throughout the run. There's some that are going to be more useful than others. Diamond Dust isn't like that useful for our purposes. Um, but there are some that are actually going to be extremely good, especially when we get to some of the other character runs as well. In the right. meantime, Pestle's we'll just having to improv all over the place. Mm -hmm. in this yeah, right there, now. there's not much to this backup strat. It really is uh, just dodge all his attacks. He'll do all his set attacks, um, the hallway, the spin, all of it. He will always do. What order he does is it. What order he does it is RNG. But hey, he's done, so woo. Nice, job. And actually learned Firestorm from that, which is another command style that we will be making use of in just a couple worlds. Yeah, Firestorm is, it's top five command style yeah. in the game. It's pretty significantly easily. better than uh, something like Diamond Dust for our purposes in this run. So as I alluded to earlier, the reason we did this world first is because when we beat the world, we get a bunch of commands that we can then use in this world. So we're going to pop on in, do that, sell most of the crap we have. We don't want most of it. And I think that'll be fine. We're going to get two two fires, two thunders, three magnets, and uh, we have enough for fine. That's fine. And now we're going to plop most of those on. If you've seen a Kingdom Hearts game before, uh, Magnet Thunder <laughs> will look somewhat familiar to you. <laughs> And uh, there's a reason for that. It's just pretty dang good. It's like not much else to do. Uh, we'll quit a bunch of other nonsense and trying to remember if I forgot anything, which is hard when you might have forgotten. <laughs> so I want to ask about one thing because the audience is probably wondering, uh, how are you able to do uh, a lot of damage with EXP zero equipped? 
Right. You will see more examples of this much later on when we... Uh, I'm just going to try to get these aqua drops. Mm -hmm. ugh. For, for um, now, it's really just kind of the minimum damage that the game scales your, right. your damage to um, in a lot of cases. But in some cases, we'll get to do mm -hmm. some, some really massive damage. Okay. How it works, really, is um, each hit, and especially the finishers, which commands are Wellspring, let's get the chest, uh, is buffed up to the battle level of the world you are in, which is the, how strong the enemies around you are, essentially. Mm -hmm. So as we uh, get further in the game, what we're damage is going to be buffed up to uh, match how long we get. This is something else. Mm. I know. I like how you got a wellspring drop, but you can't get a single aqua level uh, uh, on that whatever. lift. That one's on me, but it's fine. I'm tempted to die and just I know. I, get Honestly, a I was thinking the same <laughs> back in back in Dwarf Woodlands. I was like, should you just take the death and try again? I'm trying to think what all this is going to screw up, and the answer is a lot. But uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, marathon luck. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> These things certainly happen. Yeah, the fact that D-Links level up from just a random drop from any enemy while mm -hmm. you're in the D-Link was a decision. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to get that pulsing crystal for safety. We'll worry a bit more about that. Uh, for now, let's talk about escorts. Each character has their own escort mission. The main uh, way these escort missions work is that as long as there's really, as long as there's an enemy in front of the character you're escorting, they're just going to stop and be scared. So essentially you need to clear out the way for them to walk forward. The quicker you can clear out the way, the quicker they will move. The other two escorts for the other two characters get much more complex than that. Terra, it's really that simple. Yeah, and uh, you also, if you take too long to kill a group of enemies, they could run up to the, whoever you're escorting, in this case Cinderella, and make you have to actually go like help block an attack or whatever, and that, that's extremely slow. So thankfully not something we should end up seeing here, but the main thing is you just want the character to move the entire time as much as you can and uh, try to finish off the enemies so they don't have to stop. Yeah, you might notice the Magnet Thunders we got specifically for this world are, um, good? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. I don't have a better word for it. Just, it's the best crowd control in the game mm -hmm. by a pretty sizable margin. The Magnet sucks them up, the Thunder does the rest. Magnet? And that's pretty true for most Kingdom Hearts games. It's just very strong abilities to have. Yeah. And you're seeing command level ups in the top right right now, and that is what we were talking about with why sometimes you put on specific commands just to get them to level up. As you defeat enemies, you get what's called CP. Um, CP, I don't, I think command it's just command points, points right? Yeah. Uh, CP is just effectively experience for commands, and Please. is how you level everything up. You can, you're getting everything. I'm getting everything but, else I want. Yeah. Everything but the uh, the level ups. Go figure. Um, speaking of leveling up things, I'm killing these guys just to get CP. I actually don't have to even spawn these guys. Yeah, I was surprised you did. It's better to get some CP and gotcha. the money. The money helps. But um, that's in the escort. It's like nothing too bad. And you might wonder, hey, why didn't you go into Aqua D Link to try to get some drops in that fight? I would love to. The problem is, anytime there's any companion in this game for any reason, whether they're fighting for you or it's an escort, you cannot use D Links. Why? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's a thing. It was a choice. Someone it, made it. It makes sense when you have, like, Ventus or Aqua in your party or something, but, uh,. Yep. So I'm just going to buy a second bind real quick. That'll be useful for later. Get this thunder, and we're going to have to do the old strats for this guy. Because <laughs> there was a cool aqua level 2 strat. Uh, the game doesn't want you to see cool strats, guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like I don't make the rules. I just... Uh, this is the joy of speedrunning Birth by Sleep. You, oh, well, uh... <laughs> then, d -Link. Oh, hey, they put me in the game. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. Yep, and you're affected by Magnet. Oh, wow. <laughs> when Which you're... would be great to see. So, yeah, Ben Smash. Uh, his finisher is really good. Every time I use the finisher, he's going to go into the Dark Aura thing. He's invincible and it'll damage you, but you can block it. The only scary part is the instruments sometimes just trolling you. But otherwise, this strat isn't too bad. It's just slightly slower and less cool than the strat I wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. 
but he will always jump here. Uh, this is the one scary part of the fight, depending on what he chooses to do. If I can knock him out of this attack, that's Oh, fine. close. Okay, nice. There are a lot of moves in there. Just a lot of ways in this game in order to get invulnerability frames. Uh, using finishers and command styles often will do it. Using shot locks will usually do it. I think always do it, actually. Uh, and several other commands as well. So it knowing exactly like when to use the finisher, for example, uh, that Pestilus did there as the boss was jumping is just a really good skill to be able to utilize. All right, first big menu of the run. So uh, first, I'm going to need this cure chest for later, so let me grab that. First things first, Keyblade, completely for swag. This does nothing. That's the wrong <laughs> swaggy one. There we go. Like, second of all, we're going to meld a bunch of stuff. This magnet into zero grab we got to start the game. The Southern Crystal will give us an HP boost. Remember that HP boost, like, 40 minutes from now. <laughs> Don't know how long it's going to take. We're going to do a, uh, let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, we're going to do a Magnet Thunder to get a Magnera. We're going to do a second Magnet Thunder to get a second Magnera. Magic Haste? What is this run? Wait, <laughs> what? That was just completely random, right? Right. You if, you, uh, if you So if you meld commands, which you combine them after you level up a certain amount, and if you combine them without, uh, like, it's this one. I'm tripping right now. And if you combine the... If you combine them with a crystal, you'll get certain abilities, which you want. Like, um, our ability... Yeah, I can't speak anymore. <laughs> like like yeah. the uh, HP boost we got, which will raise our HP bar. And the Fleetings are the best one. They give us attack haste, which makes our reload on the commands go quicker. Mm -hmm. Our only limit to how many commands we can use is just how long the reload is. And yeah, and you do have a deck size as well uh, that de you know determines how many you can equip at once. Also, I'm but you want to be able to use... I'm losing my time. mind, okay. I did the menu <laughs> right, I'm just tripping right now because this is the weirdest RNG. Really? Like, the mm. best case scenario is you empty meld those magnets and you get a magic case. That never it just happens. never happens, yeah. But the, uh, but the D-Link drops are supposed to be way more common, so I'm really confused. <laughs> this is the weirdest run. This is the trippiest terror run I have ever seen by a country mile, and I've run a lot of this category. <laughs> so now you're really going to see just how useful like these magnet thunders get when you start to level things up as well. Yeah, Magnera literally just makes the magnet effect pull further away. That's the whole thing it does. Uh, I'm going to see... Yeah, I'm going to see if I can pull these guys together and go into I was going to say, do you want to try for an Aqua D-Link? And yeah. just pray I can get lucky, which... <laughs> Getting command drops, but not, uh, not what you need. Uh, this finisher is really bad too, so I'm going to have to revert. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like at that point, Pestles was actively losing time just to try to make up for the randomness that happened before. Yeah, this game has a lot of RNG and a lot of resetting due to RNG, and I'm not used to it trolling this bad. <laughs> it usually has a sense of humor when events happen. Not today. So this fight, a um, bunch of waves of enemies, we call these force fights. They're fights you spawned into a world and you have to beat up a certain amount of dudes for the story to advance. This is a pretty tough force fight, honestly, because these big body guys like to blow up but they, if you don't kill them in the right way and things get... Nice. Things get wonky the second they're not stuck in the magnets. And yeah, it can be kind of tough, especially when you're trying to make up for lost time. Yeah. With, uh, this is the weirdest run I've ever seen. <laughs> it's dude. so weird. I'm so very, very, very confused. <laughs> the good news is you've got two other characters to potentially give you better RNG to make up for it. <laughs> uh, good luck with that. <laughs> this is the one character where it can, the RNG can really mess you up, and mm. it shows to really mess me up. Yeah. So, so uh, good on the game, I guess. Yeah. This is a room where you'd kind of do a little bit of. It, like, it's just a little mini grind almost for Come CP. On. Come on. You didn't have to do anything in the shop back there, right? Nope. Okay. Uh, and then going to be collecting two chests on this platform. This one right here that has a Thunder Surge in it is collected with uh, for every single character. So it's just the most valuable chest in the entire video game. Yep. And it has different things for every character as well, but it's just useful for all three of them. Yep, the chests are actually in the same location for all three characters, and they have different things for each of them. If you're wondering if that makes memorizing this category hard, yes, yes it does. <laughs> like, that's just one thing you have to remember among many.
Right, now we're going to get a deck that's actually use useful in some meaningful way. So we're going to do Meld Fire and Bind to get Ignite. Ignite is a damage over time effect, and it's not affected by um, EXP zero or anything like, like that. Hold up, yep, 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 that works. We're going to do a Fleeting here to get a Thundara with an Attack Haste, which is good. And we're going to Meld these for a Blizzard Edge with a combo boost, sure. It's like, so now we're going to plop all this on, and uh, this is actually a pretty intimidating deck. The Magnet's being leveled up, the Thunder's being leveled up, the Ignite's a very strong command. We can start, like, now we start seeing some of the fruits of our labor of, okay, our commands for the start of the run were not very good, but now we have something. Now we can deal some damage. Yeah, Ignite is basically the same as Poison, except way better because it will just apply to whatever you're locked onto, as opposed to having to... Uh, you know, just be near the enemy like you have to with poison. And now we're getting into one of the scariest fights. Yep. Um, and one, uh, a fight that you do with all three characters. Yep, Trinity Armor. Uh, this is going to get progressively easier as the run goes on. <laughs> <laughs> like, Terra's the uh, scariest. Because essentially, he has three body parts. You have to break the legs first, then the arms, then the head. There are HP barriers that prevent doing things out of order. So, uh, remember when we got Firestorm earlier, the Ignite's going to allow us to get into that. And Firestorm is just a very powerful command. Thunder Surge, you can start seeing some of the damage that can do. It's like, we're, now we're going to get the Firestorm finisher, and you can start to see the amount of damage Firestorm does. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty strong. So, we're going to try to get into it again, just like that. We're going to hope the Mega Death Laser doesn't fire because it can spawn an invisible hitbox that will ruin your day. Then we're going to quickly take out this next body part. He's going to go invincible and do this. He has iframes, I can't do anything, just going to block. And then he's going to do a Super Mega Death Laser with mm. the Lingering Hitbox again. Get hit by this once, you're dead. But if you stay right under him, uh, he can't touch you. So that's always good. Your party members can kind of like jostle you around a little bit though, which can get scary sometimes. Yep, I also like to do a little extra oh. damage when I can. <laughs> That's <which> so <laughs> risky. <laughs> it's not worth it at all, but uh, marathon strats, you know? Yeah. And then we just wait for him to do his final attack, and he'll die. Very nice. nice. Very nice. That fight's extremely easy to die on. Yep. Terra, especially, is a run where if things go smoothly, it doesn't look that bad. When things go poorly, you will notice. <laughs> Like, it gets off script very quickly. Speaking of which, I think I have to eat Aqua all together, which is really fun. <laughs> so, fun fact about D-Links, if you just use them, it will pull you straight to the ground completely. Gravity just doesn't matter at that point. So, that's pretty cool. Yeah, this uh, game also got a big buff when it went on to the PS4 collection, because on PS3, D-Links would take a lot longer to look, kind of load in. And uh, PS4, they're loading super fast, so you can use them in a lot more places to save time. And buying two Fire Dashes, remember that about 20 minutes from now. <laughs> yeah, Thunder Surge and Fire Dash are both really good. Um, they give you invulnerability frames uh, and also deal good damage, but they're going to be significantly useful later on. The Fire Dash will primarily be used for Meld Father oh, uh, true, later yeah. on. So speaking of, we're just going to take out these guys a bit, because they give decent CP, and it takes two seconds, so... Perf. All right, Bragg. Uh, yeah, talk. <laughs> this is a fight where you will die very, very easily. Uh, have fun, Hobbs. <laughs> yeah, Bragg, uh, if anybody is familiar with Zigbar in Kingdom Hearts 2, this is Zigbar. And uh, he sucks just as much here, <laughs> if not maybe even more. Basically, the main damage for this entire fight is going to be Ignite. Uh, Tesla's going to start off by reflecting some of the shots here, trying to use the physical attack rather than a block just for swag because he's a baller like that. <laughs> and then most of your damage is going to be from Ignite or from reflecting the attacks. Every now and then he's going to be using Thunder Surge in order to like prevent an attack uh, or kind of interrupt an attack yeah, that it interrupts his doing. charge attack and if that gets off it goes all around the arena. If you've played KH2 before it's not fun. Mm -hmm. And then he'll always kind of do a similar pattern uh, of moves but in a random order. And the, probably one of the scarier ones is that one where he does the like circle of yeah, shots. He'll always do the circle shot after a couple. That's a glitch oh. with Ignite. Uh, he'll always do the circle attack uh, after he does a round of attacks from up top and when he's on the bottom and doing the charge thing. It's a completely predictable fight. It's just 
random in what he does. And then there's the glitch you saw with the Ignite, where the Ignite uh, won't hit him, and he'll do an animation, and nothing will attack. Yo, and it like <laughs> then it becomes hard to punish him. And said it's a fight where if it goes well it's you block and you ignite and everything's good if it goes badly you die in one hit yeah that is a fight that we were fully expecting one or two deaths on i was so. going to put money on that <laughs> yeah i was going to lose money on that <laughs> yeah apparently it's so like i gotta trust in my abilities i guess mm -hmm. i don't I don't know. Just so, can't trust in the RNG. <laughs> nope. Right. So second round of worlds. Uh, we get some interesting routing in here later. For Terra, it's not too interesting. We'll do up just one world at a time. Going in Disney Town. Disney Town's the mini game level of the game. Every character has their own little mini game. Terra's is what we affectionately call Kingdom Carts. <laughs> where it's a Mario Kart ripoff. I don't know how else to describe it. Why and did they not call it Kingdom Carts? I don't like, know. They, they missed such a great opportunity. <laughs> I don't know. So we're just going to uh, drift around, hopefully get a sub two minute time. And if there's any uh, messages, anything you'd like to promote, go ahead. Well, thank you so much. Um, we actually have a couple of donations here. We have $25 from Rebel Dragon 95 Hey, hey. Rebel. Just wanted to say good luck, and I better see Ice Slide with Terra at the end. We're doing it, Rebel. We're <laughs> doing it, for better or worse. Uh, shout out to Rebel. He's a fantastic runner of this game. Uh, current world record in all three beginner categories. See ya. Great runner. And then we also have a $100 donation from Antidale with no comment. Thank you so much for your generosity, y'all. Alex, how are uh, those donation incentives doing? So we do have a few open for this run to fight some super hard like post-game bosses at the end of the run. Later, alligator. <laughs> it's actually RNG which voice clip you get, and later, alligator is objectively the best one if I say so. <laughs> this is the price I have to pay for no lock with you, like, I guess. I don't. <laughs> what I've learned is I need to take lock with D-Link out of the run, and the rest <laughs> of the RNG is great. <laughs> Um, on those donations, uh, those incentives, we do have uh, $20 towards the uh, Final Mix All Stories Critical, uh, the Fight Armor of the Master mm -hmm. out of 500. We oh, have... we got to make some movement on that, folks. Yeah, we Come have on. a ways to go, guys. Yeah, we ha you have until this run ends, which yeah. uh, you're, you're lucky. Uh, <laughs> you got a couple of RNG is slowing me down a bit, so uh, <laughs> you have a little bit of time to make up here. Mm -hmm. We have $75 out of $1,500 on the fight No Heart. And then we have $195 towards that $500 for fight Venatos Revenant. So get your donations in for that. Those would be a great time. Yeah, folks, rpglimitbreak.com slash donate. Don't forget to put it towards an incentive when you donate as well. The good news is this was a sub two minute race, so the run is valid, even nice. though I reloaded the save, it's still valid. <laughs> like, right, I actually get a couple extra cutscenes here because of all story stuff. But it is optimal to uh, mess with your save files in a way where certain characters are complete in order to stop those cutscenes from playing. We're not doing that here because we have to do all of them, so mm. that's just the way of it. Hardest fight uh, oh. in the whole run, right here. We're going to hold a line and press X. So if there's anything else you'd like to promote, go ahead. And real quick though, unironically, it is really easy to die in a lot of, anytime you see these enemies show up, it's really and easy I to have died in this fight before. Yeah. It happens. Name a fight I have died, I promise you. <laughs> But that's going to load us right into one of the harder force fights in all of the All Stories run. Especially since I don't have Aqua. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm going to have to stagnate. And uh, we'll see how this goes. This is all improv uh, live for you guys. So uh, <laughs> wish me luck. I like, like how even when running BBS, you still end up having to do Spider-Man fights. <laughs> because like, Pestle is also a great runner of Marvel's Spider-Man. We always talk about how much you have to improvise in those fights. Yep, so I'm supposed to have Aqua D-Link, which has a magnet attached to um, shuffle in and out of in order to get cooldowns where I want them so I can go ham. I don't have that, so I just kind of have to use my uh, cooldowns in such a way that that could have been worse. Yeah, that really could have been a lot worse. <laughs>
It's like, but we're, effectively, we have two Magneros where we're supposed to have three, because the Aqua D-Link effectively gives us a third one, and it's one that doesn't have any cooldown as long as we know what enemies will refill our D-Link. It's one of the major techniques we do in this run, and I can't show it off because the game is mean. <laughs> yep. Go figure. It's unfortunate. But uh, some cool movement tech here. I can skip the Wellspring because what what is this run? <laughs> and uh, say hello to Cinderella D-Link. She has a funny ability called Enchanted Step. And uh, if I can not uh -oh. be dumb, um. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, Together. accidentally went into the wrong D-Link there, so Pest is just going to kill some stuff to get enough D-Link. You have to have a completely full meter it's in order to go into fine. a D-Link. That kind of sums up how this has been going. Yeah. But it's A-OK. -okay. We're just going to get D-Link back, leave, and uh, Enchanted Step, Cinderella. Right, that one. <laughs> so going to lock on to this guy above us and just uh, yeet. Nice. nice, all the way up there. There's this weird property in this game where when you kind of start to fall and then use a dash style move or anything that kind of like would move you towards your target, you can sometimes just get like immense height out of it. And uh, that's not the last time you're gonna see that. Nope, that is very useful. So experiment, uh, what do I even say about this fight? So you know Ignite's really good. And the problem with Terra is because he doesn't really have ways to exploit how EXP0 works like the other two characters do, there's a lot of fights where we just kinda do damage over time effects and run away. And that's sorta what we're going to try to do here. If I can get really lucky, I can skip uh, what we call a desperation move in the community, where an enemy goes invulnerable, does some mega attack. His is he will go into these guns over here and He's not giving me the pattern, or he's giving me the other pattern. What is this run? It's mm -hmm. like, so, yeah, he should go into the gun here, because I didn't get the pattern I wanted to okay. skip it, which is perfectly fine. We're just going to run in the circle. It's honestly the best way. You can block these. Uh, I can't. Sonic can. <laughs> I don't understand the timing <laughs> at all. Like, Sonic, how do you do it? I gotta stay on the side of the room. <laughs> where both dogs are aiming at you. Because I swear I saw a video where you not only did it, but you like messed with your command deck to make the <laughs> rhythm of like the music. Yep. <laughs> While doing it? Oh my god. And I'm like, how? <laughs> I just want to know how. Yeah, you can see how long this is and why you really would love to get lucky and get to skip it, but the like randomness just does play a big factor in it. It's not just execution or... Yeah. It's something that uh, RNG is like, I don't know what RNG is this run. You're just going to have to bear with it. Uh, <laughs> it is what it is. So, but we can spend some time here because this is phase two once he gets out of the gun, which means he'll do the third charge, which I know and did not account for. So, but uh, he gets this extra charge attack. There's nothing too, too scary in this fight, except if you get hit twice and die. <laughs> You don't have second chance, right? No. Nope. So you just happen to live at one HP from that attack. You survive one attack. Wow. <laughs> the HP boost does help there as well. Yeah. That's not the primary reason we get it, but it's nice. It is in this run. <laughs> so uh, let's see if the link luck is going to continue to be this stringent. Because if it is, I'm going to have to change the entire route. Because this entire route is built around our boy who just got in that last world stitch. And Stitch's D-Link has a lovely ability when you level it up called Double CP. All, whenever you kill an enemy, you get twice the amount of CP that you normally would out of the kill. Thank okay, you. Okay, good. All right. That, that's what it looks that's like. That's what we needed. <laughs> and then Pest did what we were trying to talk about before, where it actually reverted while there were blue uh, drops uh, on the ground to the, fill the D-Link meter do, back do, 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 up do. before, uh, before you know, needing to use Stitch again. Yeah, it's com those D-Link drops are just completely RNG. Like, there's nothing more to it. It's actually you get completely a RNG. <laughs> well, of course I get that. I guess I'll take the trade-off. <laughs> when we, uh, whenever um, the fight ends, you automatically collect everything on screen, so I'll automatically collect that level, which is a nice little mechanic. See, there we go. And you were, is saved. <laughs> you were explaining to us earlier how between the magnets and the thunders, you do like a little attack and that gives you uh, more CP, right? Right. For some reason, Magnet Thunder will kill everything, but it gives you less CP than Magnet Attack Thunder. 
I don't know why, I just, this is something I found when not getting the amount of CP I wanted in these terror runs. That's so weird. And a reminder for anyone who's forgotten, CP is our command points or effectively the experience that levels up your commands. So it's extremely crucial, especially for Terra's run. Yep. You know that this is an RPG speed run where we, the playable character, cannot level up, but we still <laughs> care a lot about levels and grinding. Yeah, we care about levels on more than one mechanic. <laughs> Now we're forced into a 10-round uh, Colosseum battle here uh, before having a two-phase boss fight. Yep, we're just going to, like, Magnet Thunder is just unmatched. It is matched by exactly one thing, which is an ability called Warp, which is A, really hard to get, B, exclusive to Terra, and C, doesn't give you CP for your kills, mm -hmm. so we don't use it. And also still kind of random, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is also completely random. Yeah. The whole way that ability works is every time you kill an enemy, just random percent chance it goes poof. Which you will see in this run. You will see it under Bashful. Remember that for like 50 minutes from now. I don't know. I'm making up times at this point. <laughs> There's a lot... You pro There's a lot of routing in this category where stuff just comes into play way later. <laughs> Which is what I find interesting about the routing, because it mm -hmm. legitimately is because everything's so fixated on your commands and the command levels and everything else, like everything in the route gets completely changed just by changing one thing. So I'm going to go into Stitch <laughs> because I want double CP. I'm going to give Hobbs a heart attack while I'm at it. But... Yeah, and he dropped another <laughs> level. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing is uh, Ohana beat. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I have never seen this. <laughs> and this won't end until the thing's over, so... Uh, <laughs> are you doing... <laughs> Great. I find you time for those donations, people. Get them in. <laughs> yeah. Donate for the boss fights, please. But yeah, it is funny how even once the uh, D-Link is at max level, which you can tell by in the top right, uh, or sorry, bottom right corner, but above Terra's picture, the, the it two- so long. Yeah, the two little like uh, circles that had uh, some kind of symbol in them. Those are the two levels for the D-Link and level do, 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 two do, do, is the max do, 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 level. Uh, but they can still drop level ups and I think maybe it like refills your CP gauge or something. I don't remember what it does. Uh, yeah. The, yeah. It, or not CP, your uh, your D-Link D gauge. Yep, yep. Yeah. Okay. This is unironically one of the scarier fights in the run, so uh, have fun, Hops. Yeah, Zach uh, sucks. <laughs> Basically just going to be using Ignite for a lot of damage again. Thunder Surge is going to be helpful as well. And trying to mostly stunlock this boss. Yeah, the thing is, every normal attack does actually stagger this guy. Uh, this finisher will mean he'll not be staggered. This is a one-hit kill move, by the way. <laughs> I was not in the range where it would have one hit kill, though. But yeah, if you don't stagger him for even a second, he can be very hard to predict, uh, like that. Yeah. I, that's what happens when you use the magnet instead of what I wanted to use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, as good as magnet is, it doesn't affect most bosses. If you say most, it does affect some bosses, but it doesn't affect most. So it's really great for crowd control in a uh, forced fight with unversed, but not as great for bosses. Yeah. I am donating uh, ten dollars per death, so uh, if you want yep, to match there it is. that, I, I saw that whiff, and I was yep, like, yep, "That's yep, yep." Yeah, so this will uh, this is great because this gives you all an idea of just how close Pestilus has been, like to the bleeding edge, basically, <laughs> like just how close he's been to, to being able to to die in every single fight throughout this run so far, and uh, every fight in the entire category, really. Yep, ten dollars per death if you want to match for up to twenty. <laughs> So, really, we're just trying to make sure everything hits him, and then when we use the finisher to back the heck off. There we go. And ideally, we can get him back in the little groove. It's a, it's a really scary fight because, again, you die in one hit. We don't have our second chance once more abilities yet, which are what allow us to survive longer combos. And he also, it's like... There's just a lot of weird things in this fight. Like, you want him in the corner, but the corner Oof, of the arena gosh. leads to weird things with, like, some hitboxes. And the fight gets weird. Nice. Okay, good job. And now, uh, potentially an even harder fight. Yeah. Uh, have fun, Hops. <laughs> so that's phase one. <laughs> we got to fight Zach again now. Uh, and 
Honestly, I don't even remember everything about this fight because I just remember hating it <laughs> and how scary it is. Right. Uh, like so, Sonic, do you want to talk about this fight? Uh, but sure. So what Sonic is going to do is that that is for a loop here after the G down here. Mm, yeah, so once so, he checks out, he has to let himself attack him, so you might want to back it off. And then from here, he's going to do one, two, and nine, and then that's going to do them on them. This is no loop. Nice. And this is Flame Salvo, uh, one of the shot locks that he actually picked up much earlier on in the run. And it gives you a lot of iframe. Yeah, as well as doing pretty good damage. Like, Flame Salvo's damage is, is not nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, it's something. It's, it's better than a lot of the shot locks. <laughs> yeah, this is very true. So, Gold Rush, it's the same thing. It's like, I don't know why this loop exactly works. I just know that this exact pattern of attacks will get the jump followed by the DM. And you see our focus is out. We can't do that anymore, but that's okay, because he's just about dead. Assuming he does, I kind of muffed that, but it's fine, because this should kill. Okay, good. I was going to say, if that didn't kill, that was about to be very scary. <laughs> Yeah, that is definitely another boss that makes heavy use of desperation moves, times where you really can't, like, stagger the boss at all. You can't make him flinch. In this game, you actually can deal damage to a significant portion of uh, enemies when they're using a desperation move, but you can't otherwise affect them a lot of the time. So you generally are going to be using something like a shot lock that gives you a lot of invulnerability frames in order to just deal a little bit of damage while mostly keeping yourself safe. How do I do this without Aqua? Uh... <laughs> well, this is the hardest force fight in the run. So these first guys are not too bad if I don't use up everything. I yeah, all your magnets. <laughs> it's fine. You so, should do okay. yeah. Like these guys, the totem poles aren't the problem. The problem is there's an enemy that spawns here that's a big old ape. Uh, that's not an insult, just what it is. And these big old apes do not get sucked into magnet. So things get wonky. So I'm going to just go into Stitch real quick to get some more CP out of this. Revert, because floods are a little bit of everywhere. Uh, this if, if you want to play it safe, you could try to get into Firestorm, maybe. Nah, this will nah. be okay. okay. So we're just going to pull, pop these guys in the middle, then we get a wave with these guys who can oh do goodness. that, which is not very fun. So... That was we, a, I'll call that an ignite uh, glitch. It's not a glitch, but all you do is you uh, use it, you toggle the auto attack, and good things happen. Hello? All right, that was a good option play. <laughs> like, I don't know what's happening in this run anymore, man. <laughs> I'm just... How did this enemy live? <laughs> good job getting through it. It was rough. But yeah, that ignite, uh, quote unquote, glitch that he was talking about, where you can use ignite on an enemy but switch your target really fast at like the same time, and you actually use one command of ignite to apply it to both enemies, which is really cool. I, for I completely forgot one thing I was going to do. It's, it's fine. What did you forget? <laughs> it's not super important. Okay, good. Like we'll uh, just do some other options, but um, yeah, what? What was I going to say? I was going to say something, something else. Just uh, I, this rip. I used to know stuff about this game, dude. I, <laughs> this it's, run is screwing me up. Yeah, I was gonna say you're having to think so hard about how to route every fight that you would normally use Aqua D Lincoln, which is a lot of them. Like, <laughs> that it it's hard to think about anything quite else. Quite a few of them. So I saw we got to level three. Uh, level three air slide yeah. in the last fight, which is what I really want. We'll just. Flop on over here and go to a Terra exclusive area called Skull Rock. Now, shout outs to a couple runners called Texas Grandma and Kirby Master who helped incorporate. Uh, this movement was sort of known, but it wasn't done in runs until they found ways to make it useful. You just magnet some dudes, use the enchanted step stuff that we uh, talked about a little earlier. And we can go do that to go all the way up here. You're not supposed to be able to get up here until after you beat this boss we're going to fight. But we're just built different, so it <laughs> doesn't really matter for us. And we're just going to plop real quick our Solemn, the Blizzard Edge we made a long time ago, and the Fire Dashers we made a long time ago. 
And then we're going to uh, put Peter Pan in this place, as the blurb <laughs> says. <laughs> gonna ban the pan. <laughs> yeah, so, wouldn't you like to do that in uh, Cage 2 at some point? So our Solemn is uh, also uh, a command that, that uses... Okay. It, it uses two spots in your deck, uh, as, you, as some of you might have noticed there, and it's because it's pretty strong. Uh, it's really good. I'm just screwing everything up right now. So don't worry too much about it. So yeah, you can see our Solemn doing a pretty decent damage, even when wow. not every single hit of it lands. Nice. We don't actually get uh, Peter Pan all the way to zero HP. So, because <laughs> believe it or not, we're supposed to be the hero of this game. We are? No. <laughs> not really. Okay. <laughs> I mean, we haven't talked about the story. Just have you seen Revenge of the Sith? <laughs> yeah, that's that, the story. That's actually a really good way to put it for Terra. Yeah. <laughs> As somebody who only just saw that recently, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Like, how? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, through like cultural osmosis at this point. Right. <laughs> but I, uh, there's all sorts of things that's going wrong with my head right now, but don't worry about it. We'll get through this just fine. Just going to uh, go in and out of Stitch with that technique we mentioned earlier. Without flopping in and out. Yeah, so the reason that Pess is popping in and out of the Stitch D-Link is just because it will refresh the cooldown of every command in Stitch's D-Link instantly, as opposed to having to wait for the command to build back up and, and have it uh, you know, come off cooldown. Air slide is level four. That's all another I care level about. drop from Stitch. I mean, there's so many enemies. Oh, another one. It's very common. It's in pretty this common. Fight. Yeah, this but it's fight, just funny. It's, expected. it's just funny. You couldn't get a single. I think you got maybe another one. <laughs> I think you got three. More than likely. <laughs> it's fine. So yeah, the entire reason we wanted Stitch is Stitch leveled up uh, Air Slide all the way to the max level, which means we can combine it with the Blizzard Edge that we just put on and just leveled up in that fight to uh, may to make an ability we don't care about. The main thing is we can get to once more on it, and then we'll get second chance on our magnets. And those two things together means we'll no longer die from one hit. We'll be able to tank one hit and uh, be okay at the end of the day. Yeah, second chance protects you from a hit that would deal enough damage to completely kill you in one hit, and once more protects you from a combo attack on bosses that would eventually kill you. They'll both leave you at one HP instead of dying. Yep, so we're going to just drop in the Castle of Dreams real quick, do a menu to get the final command deck that we've been building up towards for this entire run. Like, does the run... Because uh, the deck we've had at this point has been kind of poopy. <laughs> There's not a better way to explain it. Just uh, we don't need either of these knights anymore. And then we can plop over a bunch of these things. And now let's do some melding. So we can meld the fire dashes with our thunders together with fleetings to make thunder surges, which are pretty strong. Like we definitely want all of those. Mm -hmm. With and, that attack haste. To... Uh, I forgot to buy a block. We'll do that now. That attack haste <laughs> will uh, make the commands recharge off like, cooldown faster. I'm, I'm not going to lie. The luck has had me pretty rattled in this yeah, part of I it. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> like, forgetting some of the easier stuff due to that, but it is perfectly fine. We are getting through it. This is easily the hardest character. <laughs> and uh, when things There's don't go more. your way, things get even harder mm -hmm. so we're just going to yeah pull up. we're going to make a deck which has a whole bunch of uh do we don't want that we want our renewal block and now we're done we have okay. a bunch of surges we have our solemn which we got from the chest earlier we have a cure because cure and our magnega just to have the second chance combo so that we can survive the couple of hits. And uh, now it's the boss gauntlet that makes no one want to run this game. <laughs> yeah, these are pretty tough. Master Ericus is our first one here. And this is, there is the much more difficult version of this fight that is actually one of the donation incentives you can all be donating towards to see the post-game fight after the entire run. And uh -huh. yep, there we go. <laughs> so you still have Ericus equipped. Yep, 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 yep. That uh, would be why. Gotcha. Good catch. I was trying to be like, that shouldn't be killed. 
Right, I know what happens. Okay, we can fix this. Oh, we can fix it. Just gotta... I also didn't uh, see second chance. Yeah. If you were expecting to have that yet, but I might have just not seen it. No, we don't, we don't have it, but not I yet. have... Okay. I have enough to make it work, or I should. And do we have a minute for a few donations that have come in? That, uh, yep. That'll give uh, us a chance to think. <laughs> yep, let me fix this. Go for it. Um, we have $20 from Marvin Long. Hey, Marvin. Happy to see all stories getting some love. Good luck on the I run, Pess. We have an unattended bag I didn't mention that. for $20. Oh, what's up? Let's get that Vanitas fight. We have $30 from PK4787. Um, thank you so much for that. And we have a $50 donation from Lisa with no comment. Thank you to y'all. And thank you. And shout out to Marvin. He's a great Aqua Beginner runner. And uh, my apologies. I forgot one of the dumber mechanics in this game, which is... Uh, okay. We'll be fine. Yes. Like, I forgot one of the dumber mechanics in this game, which is if you have any of movement abilities, like your blocks, your air slides, anything like that, you need to purchase a second one in order to meld it. That's a thing. That's right, because they want you to, like, still have one. Yeah, that's just a thing. So, my bad. Anyway, Ericus, you remember... Hi, bud. You remember when we got the, uh... HP up later, it's so that we can tank two hits from this guy, in theory. As long as I'm on two HP, which I am right now, I don't really care what he has to say. So second chance once more through a bunch. We're going to try to do a little bit of a loop where uh, things are on cooldown, so we'll tank that. We're trying to do a bit of a loop where I want him on the edge of the arena because he won't DM as long as he's along the edges. He will only DM in the middle. And we're trying to combine that with um, getting retaliations from our surges. The surges are really good for a few reasons. One, it has three hitboxes. Two, it has iframes. Uh, that's it. <laughs> like, but those two things alone make it easily mm -hmm. the strongest command that Terra can get access to. One of the things that Pestless made in that long menu was also Renewal Block, which means that every time Pest succe uh, successfully guards an attack from enemies, it will actually heal him a pretty good chunk because we don't have a lot of HP. So, oh, so whenever you see him try to heal and the boss doesn't attack, that's when things get a little scary. Yes, but good job. Yeah, what a difference second chance makes. <laughs> yeah, I got, no, I got no, to no. show you uh, both of those things, and I'll count the death for charity, so we're at 30 <laughs> bucks. Oof. All right. All right. <laughs> so this, um... Okay, just trying to uh, settle in a bit for the gauntlet of the last three fights. Like, yeah. this is... What you're seeing right now is the primary reason that uh, Terra Crit just isn't seen as the most marathon safe thing. <laughs> yeah, we're going from the struggle bus run on, and then progressively less struggle bus as we continue Mo through the characters. Most of the estimate I gave myself was to allow for a bit of struggle busing in Terra, because <laughs> Terra is known known for uh, being very unpleasant with those things. Like, the fights control you, the D-Link drops control you, things can just get sort of out of hand, and they kind of kind of have here, but this will highlight much better uh, how broken Ventus and Aqua can get. Yeah, final, uh, final set of fights here. And it's weird because even though, you know, this is the end, we want as great of a command deck as we can. Uh, Pestless does have Magnet equipped, which is not really going to be used, but you need it for that once more ability until you, like, level it up to, to unlock the ability outside of the command. So we're going to start with uh, Peter Pan here, starting with uh, this D-Link that we haven't seen yet. This and is a scary fight. This That's is uh, not what uh, I wanted. unfortunate. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We, you can recover, I believe. Nope. Uh, no, okay, that's fine. Nope, I, I just mashed too quickly. Mm. That's all. But. Yeah, so Peter Pan, Peter Pan's D-Link is 
really good when in combination with EXP Zero. We've been talking the whole time, like Violin brought it up at, forever ago. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you deal damage with EXP Zero? Like, even though you're at level one, how are you still dealing damage? This is the way that we're gonna try to do a ton of damage. Um, he's first building up the Peter Pan's gauge, and then just using uh, using Shotlock here to survive the attack. Uh, I, I'm also trying to use it to provoke a specific attack out of the Nidus here. Yeah, once as I want him to glow and watch the HP. Uh, top right. Oh, what? I fixed it. Okay, good job. <laughs> top right corner. Yeah. Uh. uh okay. Um. Nice. Okay, okay, okay. So that's the first one. Yeah, if you uh, if you press the sword bill input too quickly, which I did twice there, uh, it slows the animation down and glitches out. I don't know why. There's so many things in this game, I don't know why. <laughs> Very interesting. But um, yeah, remember when I said um, EXP Zero buffs the attack of every hit that you do to the battle level of the world that you're in? Um, Peter Pan's D-Link finisher, Sword Bill, kind of does like a hundred hits, and every single one of them is being buffed up to the level of the final world. So, you'll see it again. <laughs> yeah, that will not be the last time we see uh, Peter Pan in this run. Now we have uh, the phase we've been talking over, <laughs> the second fight, which is still a hard fight. You can still absolutely die to this fight, but uh, Pess, you wanted to describe how you generally feel about it. Uh, I don't really respect him, even though I probably <laughs> should, but essentially we're trying to dodge forward to force a teleport, get our couple of surges in, and then get in our Solomon for good measure, teleport away at the end of that. Nice free stagger there. Yeah, but uh, whenever he does teleport away like that, he can do a couple of attacks, which can be kind of scary. Otherwise, it's nothing too, too bad. It's nothing in comparison to what's coming. That was an unfortunate teleport right there. It's fine. Nice, nice. All right. Worst fight. It's like huh? worst fight <laughs> in the entire three-hour run. <laughs> Pretty handily. Sonic, uh, take it away. All right. So Patrick had a lot of summer surges in his deck. The moves he wants to look for from Caramore or Dark Body. Solemn. Yeah, the dark ball is the shot lock here. Yeah. Come on, guys. There you go. Yeah. So phase one, you can mostly do that dark volley attack and the R's. The uh, dark volley, we can deflect for the most damage in theory. I don't respect phase one, Terranor. It's not phase one I'm worried about. <laughs> Come on, buddy. There we go. Once he does this, we can... Yeah, that checks. We can, <laughs> yeah, we can uh, time our surges in a very specific way to use iframes through that attack. There we go. There you go, nice. nice. Yeah, so being able to chain a surge into an air slide, which also does have some iframes to it as you uh, dash away, allows Pest to get two thunder surges in on one attack. And it's, it's timed specifically with, like, when Terranort's going to do that kind of overhead uh, swing attack so that you can dash away. No surges here, so we'll run off, and he should get into phase two now, which will lead to a few more attacks, like this one. This is an Art Solemn attack, uh, same general tactic. This, there's no real strat to this fight. It is react and survive. That is the strat. No, and then sometimes you can do that meteor GM right, right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, meteors are not very fun. You only have kind of two ways to deal with them. One is to do what Pest is doing now, where you use a shot lock to get through them. But that's going to consume your focus gauge in the bottom right corner. And while it gives you iframes, it will also deal a little bit of extra damage. Um, the other method you can deal with, which we'll probably end up having to see, is just standing in a corner and blocking, and it is the most terrifying thing possible because the meteors will not always hit you. Sometimes they'll fall short, and that can mean that you get caught between two blocks and end up getting Here hit. Here we... Uh, yeah. Mm. Yep, uh, yep, yep. I had the Thunderbolt thing, so yeah. I'm just going to use it real quick. I don't want it. That's a good call. 
looks like. So that's one place command styles can come into play, is if you have a finisher you do not want, or a command style you don't want, uh, the finisher just stays forever. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you do have to use it up just to use it up. Good block. So the nice thing about blocking the meters is that it will also heal you if you're okay, not This slow. is the attack I want. The reason we got ours is because Kirby Master and Texas Grandma found out with that attack, this can happen. Nice. And just the HP bar is something. Yeah, Sing in the Dark. Nice. Is okay, good job. Did he heal twice, I think, or did he do all three? Uh, I think it was all three. Okay. Yeah, I got all three. You yeah. saw three. The amount okay. I can heal is random. And the whole thing that fight did for the plot reason, that horrible, terrifying fight, is you grow out of nowhere a cape. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> there we go. That's the whole plot reason for that fight. There, nothing else happens. He still lost his body, like... Yep. Forget about it. It's and not then a big deal. Armor goes and waits in Kingdom Hearts 2 to be a really, really hard uh, in Final Mix. I mean, it's a really hard fight. And uh, we're moving right on into the next character. There's no break, no downtime. Like, nope. This fight, this uh, runs pretty uh, go, go, go. Mm -hmm. So on to Ventus. So Ventus, Terra's main thing he focused on was the command deck. Uh, Ventus's main thing he's going to focus on is the D-Links. And after the way that luck in the last run went, I'm horrified. <laughs> yeah, but at least with Ven, there's kind of just a point where we're just going to sit there and it will eventually work. <laughs> yeah. So now we can talk a little bit about orbs. Uh, you do orbs with all three characters and essentially you want to knock them into each other, which will automatically blow them up. Uh, the AI companions are the worst part because they're random. The orbs are or not, but the second the AI companions hit them, they become random. Mm. So they're effectively random. Uh, you see Ven starts with Flame Salvo as a shot block. Uh, that is awesome. We love that. Like, yeah. Really great for him. We will uh, take advantage of that. And yeah, as you hit the orbs, they kind of get bounced around. You want to knock them in Ooh, like nice that. One. The Quick Blitz allows you to do that pretty effectively. Uh, ideally, with Ven's finisher, you can also do a little bit of like that but yeah how fast or slow orbs go is kind of up to the party members and how much they do or do not help there's not a lot else going on uh, it's pretty random it's a very common reset like ven are traditionally the least awful orbs but that was about as bad as ven usually goes because <laughs> uh marathon luck i don't yeah. know <laughs> there's a reason there's a little bit of buffer on the estimate <laughs> And do we have a moment for a couple more donations that have come in? Yep, go ahead. Um, we have $20 from Ven Kalos, back again supporting Nami and trying to see more rad boss fights from my favorite Kingdom Hearts. We have $100 from Puexel, really hey. loving Pestilus BBS run so far. Looking forward to the rest of the stories, the post-run super bosses, and Jay Hobbs' inevitable Liam Neeson lore. No, we didn't need to bring <laughs> that back. I see you over there. You're just sitting right there. What the heck? <laughs> and then we have $30 from Johnny Gopes put Terra Knot in his place, which I think we did. Hey, love yeah, you, Johnny. Johnny was uh, my college roommate who introduced me to speedrunning and this crazy nonsense. So, that's uh, awesome. Thank you, dude. And we have one more that just came in uh, from... Two, from yeah, go ahead. Uh, one more $100 from Osaka and Dathis. Here's to an epic run so far with an amazing runner and super awesome commentary. Keep it going. Donation goes to the wonderful host's choice. Thank you. All right, now we've got the dwarf. Uh, kind of like search, I guess, hide and seek <laughs> a yeah. little bit. Uh, and you have a kind of a special story about this section, right? Uh, yeah, the main reason I uh, okay, the main reason <laughs> I got into running this game actually was uh, our friend um, at Zero, aka Adam, ran Ben Crit uh, five years ago, I think, 2017, and uh, I saw him do this pattern where you just in very particular ways, like you strike ray to hit that box and the flood at the start along with the other box. And I saw all this, I'm like, this is really cool. I want to do that. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you, X, you. X is open chest and attack and things get weird. <laughs> you opened the chest you didn't want to open and then you didn't open the chest you did want to open. 
That's uh, uh, so you would use the that's finisher here. That's pretty BBS. I don't know oh, what else nice. to tell you. Good backup, because you would normally use the finisher there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that was good to still get that cart before it disappeared. And then we got yep, one last door for That's the main thing we're worried about. This is what happens when we don't have what we yeah. want. This will be a little weird. Maybe yeah. Strike. You can yeah. see how uh, annoying the dwarves can be. It's funny because I what, saw Adam do this. I'm like, I want to do this. And now I do it. I'm like, I hate this fight. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to do it ever again. <laughs> It is cool though, like you said, the way that you can position yourself so a strike raid will hit actually multiple like boxes at once and, and things like that. It's just very neat. Yeah, and uh, that payback raid chest is a very important part of the route. It's unfortunate I ended up eating my finisher to get it, <laughs> but that's the main thing that will allow Ventus to have the money he needs to do the rest of the route. Like. Terra was very strict on his money. You saw that with my reshuffling and playing around and whatever. Uh, ben, not so much. Mm -hmm. Like, Ben has a lot more leeway to just do things. Yeah. Speaking of, we're going to plop a couple things here. The mini we got during that dwarfs and ethers. Ethers refill our shot lock. We'll see that in a bit. Mini literally shrinks enemies down to tiny size, and you can uh, st just stomp them. Yeah, <laughs> you can just walk over them, and they'll just die. So Snow White Escort's really interesting. It has the same concept as Cinderella, where you just want to kill things in front of her, but you have these scary uh, horror movie tree things. And the trees like to um, go in front of her, and she uh, you have to do a reaction command in order to help her and stop her from let her keep moving. And uh, there's a lot of interesting tech to try to minimize the amount you interact with this. Like this one, you wait a few seconds to do white calm and it'll hit both trees. That way you don't have to do it once for each tree. Save me a little bit of time. Yep. And How did this that one is, flood just not get hit by the It's a thing that can happen. Yeah. And otherwise, uh, leaving those guys alive is a little annoying. I don't want to do it. But the main thing is I want this guy out of the way because it'll get her moving. I hold her still for a second so that one white calm will take out these two trees. And then we move right along. Take out. Cool. Uh-oh. A little early. Yeah. That's happens. fine. Mini Not is basically bad. your your most effective command at the moment. Not for, too bad. And fight. fortunately, the guys I had to leave alive aren't trolling too bad. Yeah. You might say Mini looks awesome and we should use it for the whole run. And I agree with you. Great catch. Unfortunately, whenever you use Mini, you don't get any uh, CP. So that's the main reason we do not. So, uh, Treant. Uh, hot? Yeah, uh, so this fight, I think, sucks. <laughs> yeah. It's not too, too bad, but uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of use of shot lock here, specifically getting to, a, like, counting up to 11, not all the way to 15, so that it only does the first half of the shot lock, and then using ethers to refill the focus gauge again. And if you do everything just right, you have enough to be able to pretty much take out the entire boss. Uh, sometimes you have to catch things, kind of uh, clean things up a bit with, like, a slide dash or a strike raid. Uh, we're going to see another one. That focus gauge is getting really low, but that ether is going to refill just enough yeah. to be able to still do another 11. I held off on a shot right. lock when he was in his invulnerability darkness phase because he can do that twice, and if he does it twice, bad things happen. Nice. Good job. Yeah. That's great. If he does it twice, it'll be invulnerable. And Flame Salvo won't do anything. Things get bad. <laughs> it's like, not good. Yeah, got to be aware for those potential pattern changes. So, uh, yeah, now we're off the Castle of Dreams, which is conceptually probably the most interesting world in the run, because Ben gets shrunk really small and goes in little households and, like, covers ar around the house and, like, gets supplies for Cinderella, and it's all really cool, and it's the worst world in the speedrun <laughs> by a lot. Yeah, you remember how we didn't get any Aqua D-Link drops earlier? <laughs> Don't remind me. Mm. <laughs> that, uh, that could be a problem here as well. Hopefully... It's not. We're we're looking for quite a few drops, um, some items as well as some level ups, in a uh, a section that that'll be coming up soon. We got a little bit of movement and uh, shopping, what not to do before then though, as well yeah. as a, yeah. We're just gonna get rid of this mini real quick by two sliding dashes, three sleep, three oh, sleep. Not not I six. Need. Let's not buy six, please. <laughs> I'd rather not. But uh, the game has a mind of its own. Yeah. 
The slide dashes are honestly just very good for movement is a big reason we're, we're using them. Um, and then we get a cool movement technique that is, it's the same concept here as the enchanted step stuff we were seeing, but you just do it with a regular attack from then. Uh, you just lock on an enemy, start falling a little bit and attack, and you will just fly on up there. Yeah, that skips a lot of moving around the area. You're supposed to go like to a couple sub areas, go all around. It's a whole thing. And then the movement in this room, I always think is pretty fun too, because you get to like have this combination of, yeah, stalling yourself with a swing, you can maybe skip a ledge grab if you're lucky there, um, sliding dash to quickly move between places and just prepping your angle for such a straight line um, as, as much as you can. And now, hey, hey, that's great. Okay, the grind begins. It. We get a, a Terra level up. We got several things that we got to do here. Um, note that uh, Pestilus also reverted after getting that level up. I believe you can't get two in the same nope. D-Link, so you is, do have to revert. That is correct. So we're looking for four D-Link drops and three fleeting drops. This is a, literally a grind. We're going into Snow White D-Link because Grumpy is treasure raid means every time it hits a boot, they have a chance to drop something. And I would love oh, it if they dropped got something. got two, I think? Uh, a fleeting, yeah, pulsing two. fleeting. I'm okay. just going to leave the room because those big guys can be scary when yeah. they get reset. So, that's so we got fine. two fleetings. And nice thing about this grind is A, the yarn ball just takes guys out for us. Mm -hmm. And B, uh, we have the ability... Okay, that's good. And B, we have the ability to, uh, holy cow, what well is this strange. run? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what is this run? Uh, that's saved like 40 seconds later. So yeah, yeah. this is great. Uh, what was Go I going to say? Man. Yeah, we do, do it here because of the yarn ball and the fact we have an objective to pick up the Cinderella's dress supplies. And the second we complete that objective, we will be teleported to a cutscene. So as long as we just stay in this general area, we can just leave whenever the heck we want. These uh, boot enemies in particular are the ones that you were trying to get the uh, effectively synthesis drops from. Yep, um, I want fleeting crystals, which will be used for magic haste, which will mean my magic commands will level up. Yeah. Uh, a level up will come off cooldown. You're looking for what, like Faster. two to three? I'm looking for three of them. Three, okay. So we're, we're one Ideally away. Ideally right? four, but we're one away from that. We're two D-Link drops away. Third room is pretty bad luck, which... Uh, I should have expected by now. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, getting some of like, those level ups quickly and stuff. Got <laughs> a suiting drop. Yeah, this is. You want to talk about a reset point. Uh, this yeah. is the run for Venkrit. If you're at a high enough level, the run becomes you get good RNG here, and then you just try not to lose time in the rest of the run. <laughs> yeah, there is like. There we, there go. we go. So the, you can kind of try to make lower amounts work, but. Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, you, no. Like, not at all anymore? No. Okay, because I remember it was like two to three when I was doing it, but now it's like, no, you just need at least You three. just need it. Okay. So we need one more D-Link and we can get out of here. It's like, come on. Just I just time. want one D-Link drop. Hey, there, there we you go. go. Not bad on the D-Link drops this time. And you all saw how just how many we got there. We even got a couple on uh, Snow White, which we didn't really care about. We do care about that. Oh, we do? Wait, yep. both of them? Yep. Oh wow. Okay. I'm sorry. My mistake. Uh, and the the you saw just how common it was there though, and that's why we were so astounded in the Terra run uh, for why we weren't getting any on Aqua. Come on. on the Aqua D link that is. A very important thing uh, quickly to just uh, change Terra's uh, finisher to level one so that we can do this strat. A very funny story about this strat as we go into Terra D-Link. This strat was found at bad luck. You can yeah. get lucky and uh, go into crit help and do more damage. But uh, this strat was found by a speedrunner you might know named Punchy, who does a lot of uh, horror game stuff. And he, and he was just looking at the uh, Wikipedia page at one point and called my friend Rebel and was like, hey, Rebel, did you know that Terra has an ability where if you're in crit, like, HP, it does more damage, and we were like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we didn't quite get there. It's just random based on the opening attack from Whisper. It's entirely based on the opening attack. He didn't give me the attack I want to yeah. uh, get it, but otherwise, Sonic Blade stuns him. The finisher yeah. stun him. It's still not bad. The good fight. cat didn't jump around the, the room or anything, so. Nope, nothing That's good. too crazy. But yeah, you... Basically, what Pest wanted to do is take two hits, uh, and we're, we look at the HP 
where the HP bar is in relation to Ventus's hair <laughs> in the profile picture kind Literally. of thing in the bottom right corner. And uh, if it's too far, then you can't survive a second hit, so. Okay, did I say that the last world was the worst by a country mile? This one's close. Because <laughs> uh, we have a little bit of movement. The main thing to talk about with the movement is that uh, Terra's dodge is really bad for iframes. It's by far the best for movement. It goes very quick. Or just, Ven's dodge here, you're saying. No, Terra's dodge, Terra's dodge was the best for movement. He yeets. Oh, <laughs> it does no, nothing's a problem for him. He just goes. Ven's dodge is not, so we use sliding dashes to supplement mm. the movement. And the optimal thing is I want to hit a guy with the sliding dash. And, and I hit him, I can then dodge cancel out of the attack animation. And it propels me forward, and I don't have the uh, end lag. So that's ideally what we're doing, like that. And yeah, we have a minute if you have anything to uh, plug, potentially how uh, far along we are with those boss incentives. So we are up to it. Four hundred and ninety-five out of five hundred dollars wow. on fighting that Vanitas remnant. Um, just five dollars more, and that will be filled. And we do have a couple of donations. We have uh, ten dollars from Manga Book Guy. Always excited to donate for some Kingdom Hearts. We have Patches One Ninety Two with a hundred dollar donation. No comment. Thank you so much for that. We have Void with $10, all the love for Terra, a tired man just trying his best TM. And Hatakal, loving the event as always, putting this towards the often dead Prince Canock being named Box and Dragon Warrior 2. Thanks so much, y'all. Yeah, thank you. Keep those donations coming for those boss incentives because we got a bunch of them. Nice mm -hmm. extra deal I trust. So uh, Sonic Blade, again, is pretty good because it locks you around and propels you. Here, here's a couple things. One, these goons are the worst enemies in the game. They attack really quick, and they still kill us in one or two hits from the whole critical level one thing. And then you saw that. I did not press block. That is one of uh, Hera's abilities, or he will auto block whenever he thinks you're going to get hit which will stop what you're doing and force you to go into the block animation. That can lead to me being dead. Because yeah. he will attempt to block it, there will be nothing there, then I'll actually get hit. Yeah, so... you'd think it'd be great, you know, just automatically block? Yeah, that's fantastic. It's miserable. It's, it's so bad. This fight is just not very fun, because again, we die in one or two hits. Uh, this just, particular one I'm just been... trying to bunch them up with this finisher whenever I can. He ran away, yeah. so whatever. Just that's fine. This particular fight went pretty well, though. I, I'd say, like, yeah. you didn't get too many. I didn't get hit. That's kills. the important. Yeah, thing. exactly. <laughs> if you don't get hit, that fight's fine. If you get <laughs> hit, uh, have fun. So this is one of Kingdom Hearts's patented mazes. And by patented mazes, I mean you go straight once you make a left. <laughs> It gets a little wonkier with this because there's one, those color portals in the next room, they change color and you have to wait for that one. Otherwise you go straight. But here, uh, I don't want the target yeah. in. He yeah. was too close to the edge. Oh, oh come still? on. Still? Uh. Um, yeah, this gets weird now. Oh, and it fell down. Uh, just I was going to say, my death might actually be the fastest yeah. thing here. So uh, basically, Pestilus needs a chest that is across that gap, and so was trying to use Slide Dash to get over it to it right now because uh, otherwise, like you can't get to it. Normally, the game kind of expects you to come back later, uh, but you have to not have the auto lock. That's all that's supposed to happen. Yeah, like you're supposed to just jump away and not be auto locked onto the goon. Because yeah. if you see any health bar in the top right, that means that you're automatically locked onto a target. Any attack or command you do will target that dude. Yeah, and it, unfortunately the goon must have just like ran to the edge and uh, just hung out too close. Yeah, I he got knocked into the edge somehow. I think that's the only yeah. real logical explanation. But uh, is what it is. Pain. Goons suck. <laughs> they do very much suck. All right. Menu time. We want... <laughs> Someone real excited for menus over there. We want Payback Raid. And you might say, hey, didn't you get a Payback Raid in Dwarf Woodlands? And I would say, good catch. I didn't expect you to catch that. But but uh, there's a reason for that, and that reason is money. And we'll get into that. But first, we have one of the more complex fights in the game. Sonic? So what Pac-Lex is here is 
immediately after the Snow White Helium. That is one of the reasons why we be Snow oh, White Helium to be level 2. Oh, that's right, yeah. And Basilisk is gonna uh, constantly that set here. That way he offers several for AP. So what this does is if you see Snow White's bar fell up, that's because the Pathless is still critical for AP and slow, slowly fills up over time. Yeah, so this damage, or this attack right here, the finisher Sweet 7, does uh, pretty much our most reliable damage against this boss. It does quite a bit. So you can see, as Pestilus mentioned, D Links are Ventus's run. Like, they are the bread and butter. And now you're going to see the bar that Sonic was talking about right above the command menu. It's just rapidly increasing. And that lets you go straight into another Sweet 7. And now Pest just has to wait for the boss to be in a good position to get hit by as much of this as possible. Otherwise, you know, if he had done yeah. it too soon, then the boss would have just teleported away, yeah. been invulnerable for a bit. I'm looking for specifically this attack with the lightning and the before attack with the sleep thing. Which, ideally, she would have given it to me right at the start of the fight, but, mm -hmm. uh, what is this run? And she teleported again, so couldn't finish yeah, off she's there. Dead. Nice. Good job. It's a really easy one to like accidentally start a finisher too early or something, and then you end up ending the finisher while the lightning attack's still happening, and you just die without being able to do anything. It, it, there's a lot you can do to mess that fight up. Mm -hmm. So remember when Hobbs said that, that some bosses are affected by magnet? <laughs> it's like, so we're coming on the one that is. One that is. So uh, you'll, we don't have magnet, but we have sleep. <laughs> sleep yeah. will do a sense. Like, it's interesting, Vanitas 1, for whatever reason, is just affected by status moves. Like, he just is. Mm -hmm. And as you fight him over and over, he is no longer affected by status moves. So the first thing I'm go going to do is I'm going to attack him real quick, and then he's going to murder me. Hello, dude. Thank you. <laughs> so, so you're required the first phase, do enough damage or... Uh, do enough damage or get hit. Getting hit brings our friend Mickey here. And by friend, I mean he mm. won't let us use D-Links, and I hate him, you little... <laughs> anyway. Our That's mortal wrong. enemy. <laughs> so now Pest is just trying to get one sleep off, and then from here on out, if all goes well, Pest will, like, not ever let Vanitas wake up. Uh, and the other reason we really are annoyed by Mickey here is because Mickey is honestly going to do a good chunk of our damage here, so we just want him to attack as much as possible. Oh, except for when it's going to provoke Ventus to move. But there you go, got it back into sleep. This is scary, though, because... Nah, yeah. Uh, Pest is having to specifically space out these sleep commands as best as he can, because he's only got three of them, if I remember correctly. And... Don't want to team up, Mickey. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the other thing, is Mickey can want to team up and just, like, overwrite your commands almost in a way. It's, it's weird. Uh, or, like, want to take over, basically. Yeah, this timing is way more specific than it looks. Yeah. So we saw, like, just a very slightly mistimed sleep earlier. Let Vanitas wake up. But that was still pretty solid overall. Like, I didn't die. That's all I yeah. care about. <laughs> Only waking up once, and then, like, it took, like, just a couple moves to get back in. Like, that was pretty good. Yeah. And Mickey. Uh, Mickey, 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 Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, it sound like you had something for us here. Uh, speaking of fighting Benitas, uh, we have met that objective with Ms. Akumibara yeah. with $5. Boss fights, let's go. Nice. And then you also have another $25 from Etchy. Pest hey. is the best. Hey, Etchy. Appreciate it. So, uh, enchanted step. <laughs> you go so high, I forgot about that. Yeah, that's just some fun movement to avoid having to like run around to the stairs. Also, fun thing is, uh, I was expecting to lose 20 seconds to picking up the wellspring chest in this next room. Uh, we don't have to do that. Yeah, we cool. actually got a wellspring drop. <laughs> what is this run? Dude? <laughs> <laughs> like, I do not understand what the RNG of this yeah. has been. Whenever you hear runners talk about marathon luck, all they mean is it's the most confusing thing I've ever seen. Like, you never know if it's going to be the best randomness you've ever seen or if it's going to be the worst or if it's just going to be confusing <laughs> it's, i'm still kerfuffled from the terra <laughs> stuff so holy crap oh my God. <laughs> like you got so many buying drops. drops so yeah remember that payback raid and the uh, chest we got in the last world yeah we're going to sell all that we're going to get a fire dash four thunders five magnets we're going to get an ignite 
a Confuse, and uh, we have a Bloom Letter, so I believe that's it. Excellent. And, and now we're going to just plop on all those Magnets and Thunders. Yeah, you remember how we, uh, in this next room, with Terra, we had this kind of like little mini grind while we were picking up some chests. We're gonna do a similar thing here with Ventus, but it's gonna be a little bit longer. Yep, we just have to wait for some cooldowns. This would be even worse without our one magic haste. But don't worry, it will get much better in just one moment for us. So we're just going to hop on around. You remember when we said the Thunder Surge chest we got with Terra is the most important chest in the run? We're going to pick it up again here because it has a uh, counter strike impact what's it called i think impact, impact. power rush power rush oh, okay, right okay. i knew it was named something weird that's power rush which allows ben to retaliate oh, remember okay. that for later uh mickey d link has sliding dashes sliding dashes are cool we can use them for a cool movement like that thanks mickey <laughs> you're done <laughs> that's the one thing you're useful for mickey yeah we will see him again later but mostly the sliding dashes are really nice all right, now big old Yeah, so all menu. those magnets and thunders hit level two, so now they're able to yeah. be melded. This is where the grinding we did comes into play, because all these fleeting crystals we got are being equipped right now to get five magic haste, the maximum amount of magic haste you can get in the run, which means all of these magic commands will refill off their cooldown as quickly as is actually possible for the game to do which is great because we're going to be using a bunch of them. So, and the fire dash. A very fun story about this next fight coming up. Uh, this next fight, we used to use a command style called Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt? Thunderstorm? I'm so bad at names right now. Uh, it was it's bad. Thunder, I think it's Thunderstorm with Thunderbolt as the finisher. Or something. Right. Yeah, yeah it, the fight was not fun. So I was like, hey, what if we bought one fire <laughs> so we could use Firestorm like we do with Terra? And that worked. And then Sonic back here was like, hey, it's, uh, fire's good. What if we did fire dash so we could still keep our sliding dash movement? And that's how routing works. <laughs> yeah. so, that's why speedrunning is awesome and why communities are good. <laughs> yeah. This fight is still pretty scary, though, if you want to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, I, again, this is the one boss fight that we are going to fight with all three characters. So it is very similar to what we saw last time. Uh, you do have to take up the legs, the torso, and the head. Um, but it's just incredibly terrifying because the block is a little bit scarier for Ven uh, on top of just... You, you, we've been focused on a lot of D-Links, and you can't use D-Links in this fight, so we're using commands now, which thankfully we at least did level some stuff up. No Death Laser. But... If the cool. Death Laser gets out, it has a lingering hitbox, meaning mm. it can still hurt you, even when the even when the Death Laser is no longer out. And that is how you die. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not very fun. So I did get pretty bad luck with how much damage was dealt to the propeller though. Ideally you kill it before he does this. Yeah. I would have traded the death laser for this not happening as oh. you can probably tell, but uh, that's just how it goes sometimes. Thunder. Thunder. Trying this to is... do whatever damage you can now. Uh-huh, come on. Has to be careful too about like you yeah, might think why not just shot block. He will do a hail mary thing to try to kill me if I let him. Yeah, and you might might have been thinking like why not just shot lock or something like he kind of started to try to do, but you have to stand still to shot lock and you're not invulnerable until you start actually using it. So if he didn't build up enough hits, then he was just gonna die anyways. Now we block all the lasers. Okay. Now we're good. Yeah, and this ending like, will be pretty similar to what I we saw. I can't remember the last time the propeller didn't die. That was very interesting. Yeah. Your party members actually deal a pretty good chunk of damage, and if they if just, they want to, yeah, if they don't hit things, then then you're missing out on damage. They're just standing there. <laughs> I was gonna say we're gonna see that on the <laughs> final run of the entire week as well. <laughs> nice, good job. Always good to get through Trinity Armor without a death. Yeah, that that fight. I mean, that's what you want to happen, and he still trolled me, so <laughs> that if that's not BBS, I don't know what is. <laughs> that's the way the cookie crumbles. So uh, we got some movement here, if we can get an update on those incentives. So we do have another $25 from un an unattended bag. Hey, More boss so. fights, also hi hops. Hi bag. <laughs> um, and that went to uh, the fight no hard after the BBS all stories run. 
Uh, we are at $210 out of the $1,500 there. Um, and we are at $35 out of the $500 of Fight Armor of the Master. So get those donations in to see those absolutely fantastic boss fights. Yeah, you still got time, folks, for sure. And if, I mean, if everybody just kind of like skips a coffee from Starbucks or something and donates $5 to a fantastic charity like uh, NAMI, then we can make those fights happen very quickly. Thank you. Yep, just right. get them in. Yeah. So uh, that's not what I wanted to do anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, mob fights. Uh, so this is where the kind of complexities of the game can come into play, where uh, you just kind of have to know where things spawn and the best place to take care of them. It's, it's hard to really describe because it's literally, I have fought these guys so much that if I know how to actually use my commands like a normal person, I can very quickly just take them out at the spawn point. And it is move called Thunderbolt. <laughs> Yeah, it is. So I had a reason to be confused. <laughs> yeah. And I... then the last thing with these guys is always fun. Just use an extra ma magnet and get the next wave nice. in. It's like these force fights will always look really scatterbrained or really, really good, depending <laughs> on just how the day is. Like if floods decide to not be jerks, you know, the normal things. Yeah. Cool little movement there where you jump. Uh, just high enough to get over that uh, that ledge and then fire dash. I just like that. Yep, there's a lot of... Uh, Ventus has a lot of interesting movement with yeah. Mickey in particular because the two sliding dashes allow us to do yeah. stuff like this. Yeah, I love that. Just, again, knowing exactly where the enemies are going to spawn so that way you can hit them with the end of the sliding dash and immediately roll afterwards instead of having to wait to kind of land on the ground. All right. And with that, we are off to Disney Town again to do uh, Ven's minigame, but before we do his minigame, we have one of the coolest uh, movement techs in the run. And hopefully I can get this first try. We shall see. Oh yeah, you got this. Like, but uh, it's very similar to what we did with Terra on Skull Rock with the magnet displacing and the enchanted step just getting you a bunch of height. Ven can do similar things for something uh, arguably more valuable than <laughs> our Solon. Extremely valuable, yeah. So. Uh, we talked about how movement is great for, for Ven and you end up using all these slide dashes and stuff. We don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> so instead, we're going to go over into this corner to grab Super Glide out of a chest up here, but first have to knock this enemy into place with two attacks, then jump and use a magnet so it's high up enough in the air, nope. then enchanted step. Yeah, unfortunately the angle was bad, uh, but you'll be able to try this again pretty quickly. Just has to refill his D-Link gauge, because it's even though it looks like it's full right now, it has to be shining bright like it is. Uh, now that he's picked up an extra drop. So gonna try this again, and it's, again, the same kind of concept. You're putting an enemy above you, then targeting it, jumping, falling, and then using that Cinderella chanted step, which is a, a kind of dashes forward. You got it? Yes, yeah, okay, nice. nice, good job. Very hard. <laughs> yeah, second try Super Glide, still absolutely worth, because uh, Super Glide is just gonna be much faster movement than Ven's basic rolling. So like the slide dashes are actually still really good, but the rolling that we do while waiting for those to cool down is slow enough where like Super Glide is just way, way better. Uh, sure, Thunder Boost, why not? That does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're going to equip that. We're going to equip the Knight and the Confuse we got earlier. We're going to equip the Super Glide we got. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to make some ice cream. Anyone want ice cream? <laughs> This is for this is just foreshadowing for the next character, because <laughs> mm -hmm. we are gonna want a lot of ice cream on Aqua. But uh, so, so then, uh, I would encourage you uh, to uh, clap along with the beat, but the beat is not actually in sync in this <laughs> mini game. Whenever I ran this, I had to take my headphones off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, could, I use visual yep. cues, not audio. For I this. could not do this mini game by looking at it or, or by uh, by listening to it. Um, <laughs> this is a just short, silly little mini game we have to do. So, uh, Ali, so if there's anything, any other messages you want to give us, uh, that'd be fantastic. We have fifty dollars <laughs> from Ascentia. Um, hey, gather Ascentia. thunder. <laughs> and uh, just to kind of shout out uh, Nami and what we are raising money for, um, RPG Limit Break 2022 does proudly support the National Alliance on Mental Illness, AKA NAMI, 
to get involved in the fight against mental illness and the stigmas it can bring, reach out to NAMI via their state organizations or on Facebook where they can be found as NAMI, on Instagram and Twitter as at NAMI Communicate. It is not a weakness to need help. Please reach out if you think you need help. Thank you so much. Thank How's you. It? Don't you have to get like over a thousand or something? 1050, which uh, you guys got a higher <laughs> score than me. Congrats. I was actually a little worried for you at the end there for a second. Nah. <laughs> Although the audio did screw me. <laughs> yeah. It's actually harder I'm with the audio. You have I swear. to take it off. Yeah. <laughs> All right, OC. So OC for Ben is pretty different. It was a pretty scary world with Terra. Then it's mostly a mini game world, mm -hmm. the best way to describe it. Uh, first, we have a young Hercules and young Zack, which uh, Crisis Core remake hype. <laughs> and uh, this is again one of those technical fights where where I don't know. Where you <laughs> don't remember where things are going to spawn. Yeah, where I try yeah. to remember where things are going to spawn, but I went one spawn ahead. So uh, a fun little... Happens. And I say fun with heavy uh, quotation marks didn't on die. it. Oh, wow. That happens. Uh, a fun little quirk... Are you kidding me? ...with this game is uh, if any of these, like, side party members get kills in this fight, you actually, if I remember correctly, don't get CP for, nope. for the enemies that died. So... You actually don't want Hercules or Zack to kill anything, really? Ideally, but it's not the end of the world for Ben. Yeah. These jellies are the scariest enemies in the game, by the way. Yeah. If I said goons were the scariest, both are true. Because <laughs> they both have the same thing where they attack way too quick for you to really react to it, and they're buffed by the whole crit level one thing and kill you in two or three. The jellies can just stun lock you, so that's yeah. fun. Yeah, we brought it up in Terra's fight. It what looks like they just stand. <laughs> it looks like they just stand there and do nothing. But realistically, as soon as they decide to do something, you can just be dead. Yep. So uh, urns. There are two urns. I have to get 15 the first time. I have to beat Hercules the second time. I don't have a heck of a lot to say. Actually, I will say this. I'm going to shout out a beginner strat where what you do on Beginner, you have an ability called EXP Walker, where every step you take is one experience. So in this part, you'll do stutter stepping, where you just <laughs> hit the analog stick really quickly. And each time Ben picks his foot up and puts it back down, that's one experience. On Beginner, you try to hustle this out for a good like level or so. <laughs> it's like, it uh, is also the quickest way to get arthritis, so don't try it <laughs> Yeah, it's actually kind of funny. Uh, Pestilus, like plays this game with a control scheme I've never seen, where he kind of grabs the analog stick with his like thumb and forefinger, and then uses other fingers on the D-pad while using a uh, a Hori controller, like a, a different version of a PlayStation controller. It's very neat, uh, and that actually comes into play because there was something I wanted to bring up earlier. But wow, wow, Herc, Herc is <laughs> known to be a little uh, mean. <laughs> um, but there was something I wanted to bring up before that, that just didn't have a good spot, which is the way that you kind of do all of the core gameplay in this of uh, when it comes to interacting with your command deck. Like it's really tough to be able to navigate to the specific command you want to use at any given moment, especially in the context of a speedrun where you're changing your decks all the time. And that means that things are going to be in different places. So when there were like small issues like using a magnet in the Zack fight, right, uh, in the, back in Terra's run, that's just as simple as like maybe a thing you expected to be off cooldown wasn't, so your command deck automatically scrolled one further and thus you did an extra input, right? Like it, there's small little things like that that can drastically affect the, the commands you end up using. And in a fights that are as specific as they are in this game, that can completely change the outcome of the fight. Yep. It really takes a lot of mastery to like be able to navigate this command menu, command menu in any Kingdom Hearts game, but especially I think in the ones that are, that involve a deck like BBS or Dream Drop Distance or Recoded. Yeah, you get things rolling, dude. <laughs> it's all fine. Come on, barrels. I'd yeah. say we have about another 20 seconds for yeah. uh, for some words from Ali Cell if you've got anything for us. We have $50 from an anonymous donor. We have $10 from Mechalink with a BBS is a great entry into the Kingdom Hearts series and you love seeing it. And we have $100 from Cubs Rule 21 
Balloon rub, balloon rub, balloon. <laughs> Wait, is this the right game? <laughs> so, small detail I want you to notice. We just unlocked a deck capacity slot in that fight, which means our command deck can hold one more command. We don't care. <laughs> <laughs> if you want anything to symbolize the difference between Ben and Terra, Terra was so specific on we need this to be leveled at this time with this thing and the other thing. Ben, we have an open slot. <laughs> it's like, should we put something in it? I mean, we can. I don't know why we would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is cool how you change things. Oh yeah, so this is now, Hercules can do what uh, Mickey was doing effectively earlier, where wants to have this team up command. And that is why you will never see Pestilus dodge roll in this fight. Because even though you kind of want to to get to like, uh, you know, a, a different part of the, the enemies faster, if you ever do it right as uh, Herc asks you to do a team up attack, then you end up hating everything. <laughs> and we just unlocked air slide. That sounds very useful with our super gliding ability, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right, so this stupid little squid is <laughs> unironically one of the worst fights in this run. Yeah, this thing sucks. Because like, for whatever reason, even though this is a minigame boss where all we can do is a certain like strict movement attacks, uh, it's still print level one. He still one hits us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to use barrier to block some attacks and uh, you're just trying to get as much damage in as you can. You can see how easy it is to get hit even when you block things, because this is such a long attack animation that you can get sucked in and just combo combo. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, if I remember correctly, we don't actually knock this all the way down to zero. Yeah, yeah. it's like you they, only have to get... If we had to knock it down to zero, I would not be running this right now. <laughs> yeah. Even with how little damage you have to do, it is so, so easy to lose time there from just taking a, a dumb death from that boss. Yep. So, Pulsing Crystal for safety, I don't think we need it. And fun fact, you cannot skip this. Oh yeah, I don't reason. know why. <laughs> like, if you ask me to explain things in this game, I can until I can't. That's how BBS <laughs> works. It makes sense and it's consistent until it is not. <laughs> so, uh, we get to see one of the coolest command styles in this fight. Good old Wingblade. Oh yeah. Once we uh, pop these guys. Going back on your thought, I'm like, being able to explain things until you can't. I've always felt that it's BBS. It's so cool. But it looks amazing. BBS, uh, it looks kind of janky because it's this you know PSP game that was uh, ported to PlayStation 3 and, and 4 and everything. Uh, it's And it is a janky game in a lot of ways, but not the ways that you think it is. Like, it controls significantly better than it looks like it would. Uh, however, there's all the other aspects we've talked about that... Uh, can just be weird with this game. Yeah, it is not jank in the controls of all things. Yeah. It is jank <laughs> in the AI and the, and some of the design decisions. And it's yeah. it's an interesting little PSP game. And it's interesting kind of putting this side by side with like Kingdom Hearts 2 and those other yeah. ports. Because I was going to say, like it controls basically just as well as like KH1 or 2, I would say, for the most part. Yeah, as, one is, as well as 1. At I the very say. least, yeah. So, cute little zero gravity room, you touch the thing, and that's kind of a gimmick. Not a lot more to say about this room. <laughs> you have a couple of minutes. Do you have anything to plug? Or minutes, moments? Moments, yeah, not minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. We are here supporting NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization whose work is focused around three pillars, education and support, awareness and advocacy. What does that mean? Awareness drives the national conversation around mental health coast to coast and across all demographics, having appeared in major media more than any other mental health organizations in 2021. 24,000 earned media articles and top tier outlets, including NPR, CBS News, CNN, and the BBC. So this fight is all about mostly just using Ignite uh, to deal a lot of the damage and hiding from the boss. If he sees me, he will murder me, so I don't <laughs> want him to see me. And we're hoping that Stitch, like, shoots him ever. There he goes. Yeah, Stitch is going to do similar damage to actually even more than Ignite, I think. Yep, he does. He's good. I would like him to help. 
he was helpful in the Terra run. I would like him to be more helpful here. Mm -hmm. but, and we'll need him to be helpful again with Aqua. Everyone loves Stitch. All right, and then finish off with the shot. Like, okay, I thought he was going to miss every attack somehow. <laughs> uh, finish off with the shot lock in order to, again, stay safe. And also, it's just a moving enemy, so being able to use a lock on attack is useful. Yeah, it's the funny thing about EXP 0 and level 1 in this game is sometimes we can do crazy stuff like the Lucifer fight and the Maleficent fight where we just do a crap ton of damage. And sometimes it's way safer and easier and better to just uh, run away. <laughs> like both uh, both strats are perfectly valid <laughs> for different reasons. And now we're coming up to a very cool world for, for Ventus, I think. Yep, uh, this uh, there's some cool stuff going on here. Uh, first, we, uh, we're going to kill uh, Unversed Wave over here for just a little extra CP. Like we don't need very much more. Fens is usually taken care of pretty simply, but uh, we just want to see all that, and I'll kill one more wave on the way out to get the final bit of it, because the Confuse we got earlier we want to be maxed, as well as those Magnus and Thunders you just saw. And uh, this force fight is going to be our first uh, introduction to Bashful, which is an ability that Snow White has, which is actually a command called Warp. The way Warp works is you use it, and whenever you use it, there's just a percentage chance that the thing enemies on screen die. There's nothing more to it, it's just a die roll. You use it, sometimes everything blows up, sometimes it doesn't, it's not up to you. It, because you can see how spread out these guys are, and then there are apes that won't get caught in magnet, it's just way better to pray you get good luck with the bashful than to try to do it in the Nice! Hey, wow. Okay, that made up for the first way. <laughs> yeah. Just complete RNG. I was going to say the classic clap for RNG. <laughs> legitimately, no memes. My fight in PB there is the sole reason that it got record. It's like the only reason is the RNG was good on that day in that fight. That's just, that's RPG speed running. I don't, that's how it goes. That'll happen sometimes. It's like, hey, look, it's Glide. <laughs> we have a better Glide. <laughs> Very useful. Thanks, video game. So, just pop these guys. We should. It's like. Say we. Uh, yeah, we got it. Okay. We got it. So, we're just going to get our second chance and once more, like we did with Terra. We're going to do Confuse and Zero Grab with Pulsing. That'll give us our second chance. With Blackout, we don't care what Blackout does. And the Magnera again for the once more. And look how many empty command slots we're going to have because we simply do not care. There's no reason to care. Like we have our yeah. we have our second chance, we have our once more, we have an ignite, we have a balloon letter. That's all we need. And I think this next like boss fight is gonna extremely exemplify that as well, <laughs> as to why we're not gonna care about mm -hmm. commands that much anymore. Shout outs to uh, Bloody Biscuits, who you might know for being really good at a lot of Kingdom Hearts games. He accidentally found this strat. Yeah, Sonic, and just you wanna you put wanna it tell up us, on YouTube? You tell us about this one. It's really cool. Yep. So Pat the Legend got a bot put off the edge. I hope he got the plot. And the lucky bot put off the edge. He's gonna immediately do a bite. And because we have five matches, hey, not a bite is gonna fell up to the car. Or we can put another bite on him. Look at that health bar. The finisher. And that should be the hut fight. <laughs> Beautiful. I love it. And I intentionally get hit there because if you just go into the finisher, he runs around with that attack and a lot of the hits can whiff and you need every single hit to actually connect. So getting intentionally hit into the little puddle there, it makes it way more consistent. Everything hits. That fight is pretty much why I ended up learning this speedrun. <laughs> it is so cool. Very cool fight. So now we're skipping 11 cutscenes. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sounds right. Yeah. So uh, anything to plug at all? You we, have time. Yeah. If you want to let us know where we are on some of those uh, Boston Sun of Sally, so. Uh, sure. Uh, first off, we have uh, $25 from Bliss, who says to apologize to that space squid. <laughs> we refuse. Never. We have another ten dollars from LMM or LM Motos. Oh, Let's go, Pess. Let your magnet be your guiding key. 
And then as for those incentives, we have, let me go ahead and refresh. We have $205 out of the 500 for Armor of the Master and $315 out of that $1,500 for No Heart Fight. We're getting there, folks. Yeah, we, we're getting there. Each of these is going to get faster than the last, though, so you got to keep that and in mind. Aqua's, compared to these last two, Aqua's going to go. So yeah. So got to keep up. So these tornadoes we didn't really talk about because Terra doesn't care. His slide's just really, really fast. Uh, then we have Super Glide, so we don't really care either. Yeah. So, like, but you get caught by these tornadoes. You fight enemies that are, like, super giant enemies, and it's really, really bad. Yeah, and if we were to, like, turn the camera around, they're actually chasing you uh, uh, I, as you get near them. I just them realized stuff. I think I forgot to put Oh, that, that, that could have been bad, yeah. Then the counter rush is slightly important. Only slightly. <laughs> so, uh, so, um... If you're wondering why we haven't used Peter Pan, it's because we unlock him after Neverland. And yeah. maybe you can take some guess as to what we're going to try to do. Sonic? So, I told you to like, start out by using Floyd Salvo here. Do not let me like, off of the Keyblade Rhymer theme, Keyblade Storm. And then after that, he's gonna end up the Peter Pan Eel Leave. And then what he wants to do is then hit Peter Pan, hit Peter Pan, and block this power rod, keep doing it until the Peter Pan Eel Leave is filled up. And then basically just wait for him to just get ready for dive and the frown to come off. Yeah, that dive is really important. So now that the bar is fully full and Peter Pan's finisher sword bill is ready, we just want to see Vanitas use a dive. Like everything else is just time waste and could potentially, you know, catch you and kill you. And here we go. Bye, Vanitas. There he goes. <laughs> Peter Pan and Mickey Mouse and these kinds of strats are one of the big reasons EXP Zero in the level one, it makes like actually these runs faster than beginner. Bent his D-Links, man. Yeah. He loves his D-Links. So now we're going to try to balloon letter instantly here, get intentionally hit, and then go into Peter Pan. Yeah, balloon letter is an item that'll refill the D-Link. Gauge. If you just one hit this guy, it stun blocks him, which is very funny. You can do this almost forever. <laughs> He'll break out eventually. And then you can use Sword Bill on this guy whenever. You don't have to wait for an attack. There just, we go. Just go. <laughs> that's uh, almost it. The end of the, the fight is turns into this kind of little minigame-esque thing. Yep, goes into a Dragon Ball Z... Uh, where I just want him to attack, and I'm using shot locks to counter the attack, and then we go into the Dragon Ball Z animation, four of those, and that's the fight. And this is Ventus's final boss, so after this, we're moving on to our third and final character. Yep. After that, uh, it's best girl, so... <laughs> And I just have to step in real quick. We just received an anonymous $1,000 donation. Wow. wow, that's incredible. And that finishes off the fight for Armor of the Master and puts us at $1,020 for the No Heart fight. Thank you so <laughs> much. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic, thank you. Would right, love to see done. that last one get met as well. Great job. That was, a, that was a pretty good Ven run, like outside yeah. of just a little bad luck here and there. I mean, Ven run RNG is going to RNG. Yeah. Other what, like, legitimately, Ven runs are you pray for good RNG <laughs> and don't die. <laughs> yeah. It's like we died the one time for the movement thing, so mm. that's perfectly fine. So uh, if Terra's focused around the uh, command. The command deck and Ven's focused around D Link. Aqua is very easily focused around uh, com uh, command styles. And uh, one in particular, she kind of starts with one. It's called Spell Weaver. You get it by using magic commands, and she becomes a big old magic ballerina and like twirls and does magic damage. Uh, I yeah, I mean, that's, that's uh, a good description. Here's where we would say. Yeah. Uh, remember how in the Terra run we kept using Aqua for all her magic commands because she has them, except that never happened because we never mm. got we never got the level ups. And this is where I'd put my character contrast if I had it. <laughs> so Terra actually being helpful in orbs, what a concept. 
Yeah, Aqua has by far the worst orbs because her uh, Bubble Blast is not a very good shot lock. And her, she has a Quick Blitz to try to knock them into each other, but these Magic Commands aren't just, just are not especially good for this. And her finisher is a good finisher in a lot of cases, but I feel like it's not quite as nice for the no. orbs. No, because the finisher forces you to stand in place and yeah. use it is the main problem, although that went well. No real complaints there. Yeah, that could have been a lot worse. It's like, so, Aqua starts in Castle of Dreams. She gets to do both the, uh, like, I haven't mentioned each character. The idea is that one character gets to explore half of the world. The other character gets to explore the other half. And then one character explores the whole thing. And Aqua, because she's in the story chasing the other two around, kind of a ends up exploring the whole world for most of the time. <laughs> so, that's just a free fleeting chest, by the way. Remember how hard we worked for those? We said that that's just right in the open. <laughs> There's like two or three of those for Aqua. Why does Aqua have the nice things, Hobbs? That chest wasn't even shaped like a boot. <laughs> Aqua gets all the nice things, I swear. <laughs> so, uh, the D-Link movement, just gravity, who cares? And because Terra has a sliding dash, we get to do the neat little sliding dash cancel there. An important thing to um, note with these dodges, for every character, I do not mash the dodges. I am actually timing them. And I generally time them where I dodge, I take about a step, and then I dodge again. And I'll usually double input to make sure uh, no inputs get eaten or stuff like that. A uh, cute little quick blitz there where the quick blitz will slam you down and because Aqua was hovering over the ledge, she'll slam on the ledge and then go down to the chest. You're a smarter man than I. I always just, like, mashed it. <laughs> That's another fun way to get arthritis. Also, I'm giving you a, a gentle reminder about the thing since it will be uh, coming up yep, somewhat soon. Thank okay. you. So, the quick blitz, the uh, barrier surge, that and we're going to get a sliding dash. We're going to get two of these, one of these, and we're going to plop all of that on immediately. Blizzards are uh, blizzards, nothing special. But the main thing is Blizzard is a ma is a magic, and magic for Aqua is special because again that command style called Spell Weaver. And um, you are not ready. I put it on the XP zero, right? Mm -hmm. You just did, yeah. Cool. I forget things. <laughs> so, uh, Jock Escort. Jock Escort's the weirdest of all the Escorts, because the way he goes is random. There's a few different routes he could try to take. And, uh, like the other ones, we're going to try to clear things out in front of him. We're going to get into Spell Weaver, which, get used to it. It's going to see a lot of that. Yeah. And we're just going to pop these guys, get the so... Spell Weaver finisher, and just look. Look. They're things dead. spawn and just die. They're dead. <laughs> Compared to how hard I worked for Terra. <laughs> yeah, and that escort, you just get into the Spellweaver finisher as quickly as you can, and you clear the most common path that he takes is just the best way to try to go about it. Yeah, if he takes a different one, you might have to do a little more fighting. But Yeah, which will happen. But... Okay, so Adam, who again inspired me to uh, run this, asked not to skip this cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you go against my wishes. <laughs> and they're never heard from again. <laughs> nope. <laughs> they're just gone. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts, man. Beautiful. <laughs> so, uh, Pumpkin. Uh, Did I mention Spellweaver's good yet? Because uh, we're going to get into it. The Spellweaver uh, combo finisher will stun lock this guy. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to last much longer beyond that. Like, just take a look at the health bar. Take a very close look. Just gone. That's <laughs> so good. Uh, the first day, like, that was figured out, like, when we saw the damage that EXP0 uh, Spellweaver did was 
revolutionary for BBS runs. Yeah. If you want to know how, why it works that way, again, EXP zero bumps every single hit, and Spellweaver does like 15 hits. It's it's a lot of hits. It's not quite sword bill level of hits. It's not quite Peter Pan, but it's it's it, a lot of hits, and it's a lot easier to to set up and use. It's way easier to set up and use because all you have to do is just get into the command style. And you can and move you, around. And you unlock it at the start of the run instead yeah. of Pan where you unlock it at Neverland, which yeah. is the last Disney World everyone can access. <laughs> if we had Sword Bill early, uh, this would be a completely different run. <laughs> but we don't, <laughs> so there you go. Even then, the fact that you can move around with Spellweaver and it ha hits such a massive area, so that way it's useful in not just bosses, but also mob fights. Because you might have noticed, we were never really using Peter Pan in like in mob fights. We were always just using it on these bosses. Okay. Really interesting room. We're going to get into Spellweaver right here because we have some guys over here to, uh, to drop ingredients. Nobody tell Donald. So <laughs> they drop a crap ton of ingredients we're going to use the Spellweaver finisher to get, yeah. and we use those ingredients to make ice cream. Aqua's going to consume a lot of ice cream. We'll explain why when we get there. First, uh, same. Nice. Same sequence break that Terra does, but Aqua's actually a couple frames shorter than Terra, so she has to go around the back and grab the hedge. Fun little fact. So another fleeting crystal right in the open. You know we're going to grab it at this point. And now, good old menu. We're going to equip sleep. We're going to equip poison. We're going to equip the uh, vision we just got. Yeah, those fleeting crystals again being very good for melding into uh, magic haste. And if we want to use magic commands to get into uh, to spellweaver very quickly. Magic yeah. haste are going to help us do that as well, so they're still important in this run. Yep, a little bit of movement tech I did there was I used sliding dash into the load zone, and then I paused. The pause cancels the sliding dash, so I was just instantly in the load zone. So just do the menu, slight optimization. Yeah, now, cool. This is a very cool and very precise strat, assuming I can get it right. So remember how Vanitas 1 was affected by sleep? He's not the only fight in the run affected by sleep, so we're going to do sleep. One, two, I screwed up the order. See if this is a problem, but we're going to get into Spellweaver, do three combos, a vision. I'm going to go into sleep. Yep, I. Yep, 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 yep. It's like, my bad, I brain farted, so <laughs> we'll die real quick. This won't yeah, take very long to retry. It's worth showing off, too. This is, uh, I, I have a friend who's been learning this run recently, uh, Frozen Flygon, and she said this fight in particular has been so hard to learn because of how precise it is to do these inputs. It is a lot of precise inputs. And a and lot of memorization, uh, like, like yeah. you said, just easy it's to mess up. Very easy to mess up. Like, I just forgot the order for half a second there, and that was the end of that. So anyway, sleep, blizzard, blizzard, two hits, poison. Then we're going to do three hits with the Spellweaver. We're going to go into Fission Fire Aga. We're going to sleep. We're going to do Blizzard, Blizzard, Poison, and he's going to die. Beautiful. <laughs> remember how hard he was as Terra? <laughs> I want everyone to remember how bad that fight was as Terra right now. Most of Aqua is just catharsis for how much Terra messed you up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm getting my revenge on this video game thing. <laughs> yeah, and so, like, literally the reason that didn't work the first time was, uh, like Pest said, just did attacks before blizzards, and that, even though it was all the same uh, moves, like, he did all of the same things, but because he did the attacks before the blizzards, the blizzards didn't start their cooldown at the, t the time when they're supposed to, which means that, you know, those attacks were not being used while Blizzard was recovering from cooldown, it was before they had started it, meaning they weren't off cooldown when they needed to be later in the fight. And it's another reason that goes to show why like magic haste are so helpful, because those cooldowns can sometimes make or break a fight. So this is one of those uh, Moogles where routing, specific routing is just so interesting because we want, first of all, the vision doesn't need, we want this level three blizzard specifically to be gone. If you sell the blizzards that aren't level three, you just don't get the money you need. And you want uh, four of those, you want three of those, 
and we're going to walk on over. We're going to equip these magnets and the thunders. Have you caught onto a pattern? <laughs> and we're I going think Ascension to has. <laughs> Their donation earlier. And now some little D-Link movement. We're going to go into Terra. We're going to do a little lock-on attack like we did in Ben's story and hop on over here. This has an Ice Barrage. Ice Barrage is a very powerful command. You're not supposed to be able to get up there this early. You're supposed to kill the goons. I think you have to kill Dragon Mal too to come back and try to get it. So very useful to have that now. Uh, goons, goons suck. They suck a lot. This is a really hard fight to try to use your magnets properly because you saw how much damage was done on one hit there. And you're just going to Move along. Yeah, they attack so and fast. That was a pretty clean room. I'm assuming this is the last one, and it's a clean room. Yeah. Yeah, it's not done yet, though. We do have more. Yep, we have more. And remember when Hobbs said um, Herc and Zach killing enemies? We don't get CP from that. Same with Philip over here. Philip is the worst. <laughs> he really, really likes to take out goons, and we really don't want him to. It's actually important. With Herc and Zach, we're like, eh, we don't need it. It's fine. It's okay. With Philip, it's like, no. <laughs> no, Philip. Please, anything but that. Need that command experience. Yep. So, this is a really weird room because there's a, like four or five waves you have to kill, and those you have to kill. And we're going to ignore those waves that we have to kill in order to go over here and get rid of these guys with the boulders, because otherwise, uh, have fun dying. <laughs> and the one guys we're supposed to kill, these guys are being mean. So once we take those two out, this wave is fun. We'll go here. These guys will be done. One guy usually falls off. We use the spell weaver to take out the rest of this, and that will cause Philip to do nice. this command to break a wall. And you're supposed to hop up there, but all it actually does for us is break an invisible wall, so we can uh, <laughs> slide and dash along. And I don't believe Philip killed anything. I was trying to pay attention. I don't so. believe so. So get that wellspring because. Well springs, second chance once more. Always good. More of the goons. Goons, not fun. Don't like. Go away. Going to wait for the magnet to come off cooldown here because there are boulders over here. Yeah, those guys. Like, they're not fun. I don't like them. And now we'll spell Weaver the rest of that. That was a clean goon fight. No complaints there. Another invisible wall. It is faster to do the uh, sliding dash up again for the other lever, but marathon luck. There's a pulsing over here, and we need two of them, so better safe than sorry. Yeah. It's funny. You had, like, five extra in the Ven run. <laughs> it's, they're a very common drop, especially with Ven when you're looking for anything mm. else. The game loves to give you what you do not need. <laughs> that was good, though. Yeah, those goons can really mess up your day. Yeah, that's, I do very specific patterns of... It's hard to explain some of the strats I try to do in this game because it's legitimately, I've played this game for five years, so I know the exact <laughs> pixel I want to stand on. <laughs> it comes down to that sometimes. Especially with um, Ven and Aqua, where they're so optimized. Mm -hmm. Like Terra, uh, you saw how quickly Terra can turn into uh, just yellow it. So we need Grumpy to be nice one more time. We just need one. We just need one. Fire Dash, I don't hate that. But we need one fleeting. Just one. They're going to die one. after this attack. <laughs> oh, I no. hate it here. <laughs> There's another wave over here. Just one. Okay, Thank okay, you. good, good, good. This game, and and huh? only one. They were like, no, no, no more. <laughs> if you get two, you can skip a chest. But uh, with my luck, this <laughs> run, <laughs> not happening. It's like, I know better. So Magic Haste, Magneras, Thundaras. Uh, I think we can establish they're good. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that much has been established. So Magneras, Thundaras. I'm putting a magnet here and in... in 
in that particular slot for a very particular reason. The thunder, yeah. In order to just get my spell weavers exactly on this fight. And we're going to try to do a flightless fight. Sonic, explain what that means and how we do it. Basically, that's what you're going to go behind for that right away. And then just do that just for every spell weaver. And that's what you're going to do some of the different ways to have the spell weaver because we got Thunderbolt from the dot expert earlier, which we do not want. Yeah. And once the spell weaver finishes it over, that's what you're going to go back to your blizzard, my bit of thunder. Yeah, this is a good pattern, so we should be able to get it. Looking good. Nope. Uh, it's fire. like, I had to inch forward because uh, you actually get inch slightly backwards using some of these commands, so yeah, I so. should have saved it, but... Mm. Yeah. yeah, you tried. I, I appreciate the the attempt. So if you get lucky, you can get a... Uh, uh, and, and if everything goes right, basically, you can end up skipping this entirely. The other thing is... For a long time, this used the Ice Barrage command that uh, Pestilus picked up earlier, which made it, I feel like, a... Oh, oh, you can just instantly die when you do that. So messed up. It uh, is very messed up, but that <laughs> is a thing. That feels like a glitch that should have yeah. been patched at some point. Yeah, it does, because it's like, what even hit you? <laughs> it's like, the answer is lingering hitboxes, because yeah. that's just a thing in this game. But yeah, Ice Barrage would make this a little bit... Ice Barrage like... makes this pretty consistent, but it saves a menu to use the blizzards. That's, yeah. the, that's how optimized Aqua is. It's like, yeah, this is less consistent, but it saves a menu. And the reason that uh, Pestilus was talking about putting like that thunder in a specific spot rather than having like Magnera, Magnera, like Thundara uh, right after it or something. Oh, come oh on. man. Is <laughs> uh, because any additional gauge you build up past like a full bar does not that was a bad pattern anyway okay it doesn't roll over into the next bar um so like once you build up enough gauge to be in spell weaver that bar is going to be start at zero in spell weaver no matter what so you don't need to like use a thundara which would maybe give you a little bit more gauge when a thunder would suffice and that uh could help in in situations where it's so precise like this like it figures that she would not give me like, it's not even... I don't even consider Flightless that much of an RNG thing, because you usually get it. <laughs> the p most common patterns are the Flightless patterns, but what can you do? Yeah. That kind of sums up the RNG the game has wanted <laughs> to give me today. <laughs> but, uh, you, know, you know, that's BBS for you. This is by far the most consistent, the most optimized BBS run. And sometimes you still gotta just uh, <laughs> kind of make things up. Yep. That's how it goes. I mean, we're lucky we even got that one fleeting crystal. <laughs> like, you know, the backup would have been to leave the world and, and keep going back. until yeah. it happened. So... Yeah. More of the uh, enchanted step movement here. Pretty neat. Game gets a little weird with the lock on there. Like it locks you off when you jump. I don't know why. That's the whole thing. But uh, we want to just. I want to see the blizzards go to level two here. There we go. That means the other commands are leveled up to where I want them. This is a chest we could have skipped if we got more than one fleeting crystal. Uh, yeah, that was never happening. So <laughs> move right along. And just real quick, we actually have another $100 anonymous donation um, here in this run. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Don't forget to be putting those donations to the uh, the No Heart boss, folks. We're pretty close at this point to, to meeting that one. We'd love to see all of the super bosses that, uh, that Pest has put up for, uh, for a bit here. We're not doing Mysterious Figure because even Pest has a limit. <laughs> 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 the limit is to how much randomness and just like awful BBS stuff he'll subject himself to. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we didn't really talk about that fight. Um, when I mentioned there are specific pixels I like to stand on, like that fight's a really good example. Like there's a little emblem on the ground in the middle of all those mandrakes where I know if I stand right below that, I will get the perfect magnet. 
to do exactly what I want to clear out everything. So the extra fleeting we picked up with another Magnera. We have four Magic Haste, which isn't five, but it's good. And we got a really good ability called Mind Square. Everybody remember that from when we were using it in Terra's run? Oh, oh wait, that's right. We didn't because we didn't get any Aqua level ups. Mm. <laughs> but we would have been using it a lot there. It's like, now you want to talk about getting revenge on the game. We're about to get revenge on the game because oh, it's yes. Trinity armor time. <laughs> I want you all to remember how hard I had to work as Terra and Ven to bring this guy down. Yeah, it's and I want in. you to just look at the HP bar during this fight. Constant, like, getting into Firestorm and making sure that you could land the finisher and not hope not to die right out of it or anything. And uh, Instead, Ice Barrage is pretty nice for building Spellweaver. And Spellweaver gives you iframes, by the way. <laughs> if it wasn't already really good. So all of the uh, parts are now pretty low health. Yeah, there is a tactical reason not to use the finisher here. If I think I can take it out quickly with commands, which nice. I can. <laughs> Just not a single laser hitting. And now it's just straight into Spellweaver because he was able to hold on to that one. I'm doing nothing. The camera does this. <laughs> Happy it let me show that off. Yeah, Mega Laser of Death doesn't mean much when we can do literally all our damage from below him and not, hit, not really miss a beat. So, anyway, bye Trinity Armor. Nice knowing you. <laughs> So this is where things get interesting. We learned a command style called Blade Charge there. Blade Charge is really, really good on beginner. It's not very good for us right now. But the thing is, if we have Spell Weaver and we use, I believe it's uh, Thunders right now, if we were to use that well in Spell Weaver, it would give us Blade Charge, which we do not want. So now the combos start to get much tighter in terms of actually getting Spell Weaver uh, finishers. And now we do some uh, all-story exclusive stuff. Thundara chest over here. We're going to pick up the same chest we picked up with uh, Ven and Terra in the uh, water fountain room, which will be uh, Aqua's uh, counter, counter impact, I believe it is. And then we're going to go to Merlin's house and pick up the Xehanort secret report, which is how we are able to unlock a uh, final and secret episode, is you need to beat the get beat the game on crit with all with uh, Aqua specifically and have all the secret reports. It's like we are allowed, because it's just a more fun run that way, to get the secret reports as Ven and Terra before the run begins. That's <laughs> that was interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so I already have the uh, reports for Terra and Ventus. I'm just getting it as Aqua so that this particular save can transfer in the final and secret episode. Deviation over here. Yep. Is that the only big chest we open? Yep. In the whole thing? <laughs> That's yep. great. And only in all stories. Uh, sorry, Alice, I'll, I'll go help. Um, we do have another $25 donation from Kurt Mac, um, and that puts us to $355 left for the No Heart fight. Come on, y'all, we can make it in, before we uh, finish up this run. Yeah, we can totally do that. Uh, uh. Okay, okay, so, buddy. ooh, what the heck? <laughs> so this fight, yeah, this fight I... can go like this, and then soon it will go in a much different direction. <laughs> I don't know why he didn't caught, get caught in the first one. What is this run? <laughs> it's like that, whatever, man. It's like, dude, just get in your magnet and like There it. we go, okay, <laughs> so, remember when we said most bosses are not vulnerable to magnet? Well, Vanitas one again could be vulnerable to uh, sleep, but also to magnet and just spin around up there. <laughs> and uh, guess what? Spellweaver is also pretty good here too, I think. Yep. Um, the important thing here is to not use the ice barrage until we already have the Spellweaver finisher, or else we would go into Blade Charge, like I was alluding to earlier, and not be able to have the Spellweaver finisher to finish him off. So. Yeah. Tess is just waiting to use it until it finished the boss off because otherwise it would drop out a magnet and also having to build up a second one would be slower. 
I'm trying to remember the last time I died. Last time. <laughs> Only marathon runs. <laughs> Only marathon runs. So uh, the previous two characters, when this second wave of worlds opened up, we went to Disney Town. We did the mini game. Aqua, we are not doing that. Like Aqua, we're going to do a lot of very weird routing, where we're yeah. going to visit all the worlds before we complete any of them. <laughs> it gets, uh, but it's for a very specific reason, and you'll see it when we get there. First, let's go over to deep space. We have a force fight to take care of, which this is ironically one of my uh, favorite uh, fights in the Aqua run, just because there's something really satisfying about running in a big old circle and obliterating everything. <laughs> Is it like harking you back to the days of being a kid grinding for synthesis items in like KH1 or something? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but go in a circle, uh, fun stuff. Nice. Like, this is one. Aqua Crit is the definition of easy to learn, hard to master. Like, I honestly think if you want to learn this game, this is probably the best category you could pick to learn, <laughs> even yeah. though it is critical in level one. But, uh, it. It's very hard to get good at, and you will die in a couple hits, so be mindful. Okay, so this next fight, I'm going to need Twitch chat's help, guys. This fight's really hard and really dumb. I need all the energy you can send me. I'm going to go in a corner, I'm going to hit the X button, and I'm going to need everyone in Twitch chat to spam gotcha take that as fast <laughs> as they possibly can to try to give me the energy to not be killed by these guys <laughs> who are buffed by crit for some reason, because every mini game is buffed by crit. Yeah, it's really silly how easy it is to die here, and it's just Aqua, not, take the wheel. There's not much you can do about it. If anybody needs a donation comment, uh, I, I have one in mind. <laughs> we call the fight, take that gotcha. I don't know why. Okay, hold on. Nobody calls it take that gotcha. Uh, Everybody it calls gotcha, it gotcha, take, take, take that. that. You're right. You are right. <laughs> I was about to be like, if you actually call it take that gotcha, we're going to have some serious words after good, this run, my friend. <laughs> good catch, good catch. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, bad. And this is why uh, Pess was talking about needing some help, because... Every now and then, they'll just come hit you, and then you don't want scary. to be doing this. Yeah. But uh, it's really hard to stop once you start. Uh, I just need to kill one, and it'll give me HP orbs. Okay, good. Now we should be okay. You know, you should know never to say that in this run. Yes, but <laughs> Aqua. Look, this fight has killed so many PB attempts that I just, I'm numb to it at this point. This fight. <laughs> <laughs> this fight legitimately just decides PB attempts once you get to a certain level because you can do this really, really quick, or they can do right. that. Good job, Twitch chat, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> They're not letting us down, we, we've heard. <laughs> so, this room's deceptively difficult because jellies. That's oh. the only explanation I need for that. Yeah, we're actually. Like, it's pretty lucky we haven't seen a single jelly death across these runs. We've seen every other death. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll do the safe strat. Yeah, safe strat's just idea. a spell weaver, so those guys can't hit you. It's a little slower than doing magnets, but magnets on cooldown. The way the run's going, let's do some safe straps. Yeah, I think that's a good call. <laughs> so uh, let's say hi to Stitch real quick. And... Interesting start to this force fight. Um, we're going to lock onto a flood, use ice barrage, and pray the floods don't dodge everything, because that will put us in the spell weaver immediately. And we're already where we need to be for the next wave. So we can already do some mag magnet thunder stuff. And then one more magnet, we're in spell weaver, and the fight's done. Hi, dude. Very nice. Yeah, hoping that uh, the, the, the basic. Uh, like floods in this game are basically just your shadows from mm. uh, from other game uh, other games. And as every Kingdom Hearts speedrunner knows, shadows are the absolute worst enemy in all of Kingdom Hearts speedrunning. Mm -hmm. Isn't that right, Violet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so fun routing stuff. We're going to exit the world, re-enter in this room because uh, those ingredient guys, they're here. 
They will spawn here consistently every time if we do it in this exact order. So we're doing it. On PS3, because of low time differences, it was faster to uh, kill the boss in this world and then go do that. But when you do that, there's like a 40% chance they don't show up. Yeah, and on PS4, leave. doing that only saves like three or four seconds. It's not worth it. So instead, we do the 100% consistent thing for our ingredients, and then we go see Herc. This is a really, really hard force fight to be good at. So the Ice Barrage will get us there. Hi, Flood. What you doing? What did I just say? <laughs> Shadows are the worst enemy in it. all of Kingdom Hearts speedrunning. <laughs> yeah, they're annoying. So... This is a really interesting fight in terms of I have to use this magnet quick enough so they don't get spawned into the other magnet. Same with this one. And then I'm going to try to do an exact magnet around here, and if I did it correctly, everything will die. Nice. That was great. It's also really helpful that Spellweaver has an extremely tall hitbox. Like it, mm -hmm. it, It'll hit things that are up in, in a magnet, despite them being pretty high up in the air. So we're going to ignore the story real quick because there's more ingredient guys here. These yeah. ingredient this guys... This seems like a good place. Yeah, it's a good spot. But this is the entire reason that uh, we don't go to Disney Town right away. We want these ingredients before we go to Disney Town because we want to talk to Huey, Dewey, and Louie about those ingredients. And if you remember what Ben did with them, you might have a guess of what the ingredients are for. That Kira is a all stories thing only. And you remember the 10 force fights we had to do as Terra? We have to do the same thing as Aqua. And I never remember, you can't skip that. <laughs> yeah. So if there's anything to plug, uh, the status on our no heart, perhaps. Now's a great time. We have a $50 donation from Sanjan that says, hello. Mm -hmm. And that puts us at $1,195. We are just $305 away. We are so close, y'all. Um, and remember, this is supporting such a fantastic cause of NAMI. Um, just get those donations in so we can see that no fight heart. That no heart no heart. heart, heart. Yeah. I like Other, no otherwise, we'll no fight heart. <laughs> I like no fight heart. <laughs> I mean, it's how you feel every time you think about wanting to fight it. It's like, no, no fight, no fight. No, no fight heart, please, <laughs> please. So around six, I believe, is, uh, yep, around six. Uh, this can actually murder you, but if you're quick on the cartwheels, it won't. Nice. Yeah, it is really interesting that your command style and gauge carries between rounds in this, like, whole Olympus Coliseum thing. Yep, and you can use that if you want to be safe to do Spellweaver on the last wave with the Jellyfish and iframe through everything which I demonstrated with Stitch's finish earlier in the run for no reason. <laughs> but uh, but uh, funny thing about the difference between characters, Aqua's magic cast animation is a couple of frames faster than Terra's, and that allows you to mash out a magnet here. Huh, I didn't know that. That's cool. If you try to do the same thing as Terra, they can and probably will murder you. Because <laughs> they do that. All right, big old menu. Let's see if I remember all of it, because uh, we got a lot we need to do. Uh, the Spyro, we don't need it. We have a Fire Dash. Okay, that's cool. We don't need the other. Akira, we don't need this anymore. We don't need the Mindsquare anymore. We have plenty of money, so we have the Fire Dash. We don't need that. We need one Fire. We need one... Bu we have our Kira. We need the Esnua. We need one, one Bind, wherever that happens. B3 Ignite spines all the way down here, and then we need a barrier, and I believe that's everything. Sonic? I talk right. Yeah. Sonic is our encyclopedic uh, knowledge of, <laughs> of all Kingdom Hearts runs that and men routes. That menu's <laughs> different with all stories, so I forget <laughs> things. So, those ingredients, you might have guessed, ice cream. 54 thing of Kadabras, which is an ice cream favorite. Yeah. And uh, let me do a little bit of menuing here. First, we're going to use... This is the most unfair thing ever. That's uh, Aqua's Renewal Block can have once more on it. 
for a yeah. second chance on it and not be, actually take up a command slot, unlike the other characters. It and also, it makes the routing way easier on her. Her barrier is also already the best blocking move, so the fact that you can yep. get Renewal Barrier in the first place is already amazing. So we're going to equip, uh, we'll need that at some point. We're going to equip all of that. And uh, we have a bunch of fabric adabras, which is ice cream. Uh, this is fruit ball, just win. It's three minutes. Uh, won't be a lot to talk about here. But oh, yeah, we can talk about the but, ice cream. But right we can now. talk about yeah. the ice cream, because Fabra's ice cream in this game, and when I say this, you're going to understand what we're doing. Whenever you use an ice cream, depending on the ice cream you have, it automatically puts you into the command style of whatever ice cream's associated with the command style. Yeah. Basically, it's like uh, ethers refill your focus gauge, uh, the balloon letters refill your D-link gauge, the ice cream fills your command style gauge, and specifically like puts you into that command style. Um, and I say fill your gauge as well, because it not only puts you into it, but it will max out that gauge as well if you use it a, a second time. And uh, as you might be able to tell, <laughs> That's pretty useful for a character that is all focused about getting into a, a command style and then filling up the command style's gauge to get to the finisher as quickly as possible. Yeah, you might be able to tell where this boss rush is going because it's <laughs> essentially a boss rush after this. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, uh, what, I want to tell you a brief story about how EXP Zero kind of became, this run became what it is. So there was a runner by the name of Faye who did a lot of runs back on the PS3 era. And uh, they were doing a marathon run for Aqua Crit. Back then, we knew EXP Zero was changed somehow. On PSP, it did nothing. It, you did chip damage the whole time. It was not very fun. A couple people still ran it. But we knew on PS3 that EXP Zero changed something. So we knew it was worth putting on for boss fights in order to do a little bit more damage. Like, but we still change our Keyblade in order to change stats and uh, some things like some things like that. Faye was doing a marathon run for Aqua Crit, and she forgot to change her Keyblade going into uh, Aqua's final fights. And uh, Bl and Bloody Biscuits and Asa noticed during that run of Hey, you didn't change your Keyblade, and you're doing the same amount of damage that you were doing, like even with the new Keyblade. So those two just instantly did an Aqua race didn't turn, like, turned on EXP Zero, did not turn it off. It was way faster, and uh, here we are. <laughs> We've been doing a route very similar to this since uh, since um, At Zero Adam uh, did, uh, found early Magnara stuff uh, right before his GDQ run, right? In 14? Yeah, I think that sounds right. It's like, otherwise this route is very, very similar. The only real changes that have happened are at the top, top level, where uh, I'm not doing that in a marathon ever. <laughs> yeah. I think it was probably 2015 or 16, but yeah, 15 sounds right. Yeah, 2015 actually definitely would have been it, because that would have yeah. been the first limit break as well. Somewhere in there. So... Yeah, I honestly like Fruit Ball. This is a nice breather in the run. <laughs> Like, you have a non-stop, everything dies really quickly run, then you have a nice three-minute breather, and then we have a literal boss rush. Mm -hmm. We're going to quickly take out one, two, three, four, like, five, six, seven bosses. Wow. Like, pretty quickly, back to back to back. So, we left Deep Space with uh, a space whale we need to take out, so we're going to go take him out. Like... Same room as uh, Ventus. It's always interesting seeing the same areas and seeing how like the movement can be a bit different. Like we don't have super glide in this room, so the re so instead we have to rely on a sliding dash to get up to the final platform in the door. Yeah. Like, so the main kind of like thing you can do in that room to try to speed things up is just uh, trying to minimize how high you're jumping so that you land right on the the platform and can jump again. All right, Gantu. Uh, Gantu's interesting. This is the attack we want him to do, the attack thing. He kept poison on our command deck for this fight specifically, and we really want Stitch to do damage. He's not doing anything. <laughs> and then we're going to run away. We want to be about this distance, because about this distance he'll do that attack again. And if Stitch shoots him, please, this should kill. 
Nice. Thank you, Sage. Okay, he said I saw a couple shots in there. <laughs> Yeah, the Fabras instantly put us in the Spellweaver. I think you guys know where this is going. Yeah, I, I hope you didn't get sick of Spellweaver because because uh, a lot more of it. Uh, Aqua's about to just eat a crap ton of ice cream. <laughs> Which uh, I don't play her. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, if I could do cartwheels with one hand like that, like throughout the in, like hour, I think I could. <laughs> I think I deserve some ice cream. Gotcha. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure I mashed it out, but sure. It happens. Yeah, remember how uh, rough the Zack fight was <laughs> <laughs> for Terra? Yeah, and this is where, again, the EXP Zero going by world gets interesting, because you actually get to see Spellweaver do slightly more damage every single world <laughs> we go to. By the time we get to the final world, it, uh, it does some does things. Mm -hmm. Things happen. Like, potentially good things. No Datorino, Zacharino. Anyway, uh, touch the save point. Don't want to be on 1 HP, yeah. because Hades is a run killer. Not exactly because it's hard to kill him, but because of his desperation move, where he turns red, he has a big fireball attack, and it loses so much time. Yeah. This is the bad RNG. We wanted him to go stand by the uh, Titan's foot, which we can rectify by hitting him. We want the Spellweaver to hit both guys at the same time, is the whole idea. So we'll go in it again. We'll use an Ignite on the Ice Titan, so the second Spellweaver will kill. We'll try to hit both at the same time, focusing on Hades, because he has more HP. Ice Titan died, Hades did not. Three spell weavers is pretty standard. The question is, will he DM? I'm going to spell weaver far away to try to hit him before he can. Nice, nice. good job. <laughs> yeah, being able to hit both bosses at the same time is really cool. Yeah, sometimes uh, doing the spell weaver far away, the spell weaver hitbox is just wide enough. You can catch him before he DMs. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes he'll do whatever he wants. Like, you know, God of the Dead, I guess you can do what you want. <laughs> yeah. So... And then Spellweaver, well, as good as it is, Spellweaver is not going to be the only thing we use for the rest of the run. No, uh, it is not. Now we're going to run in the circle for plot. So, uh, <laughs> literally. So, any, th any uh, updates on anything? Go ahead. We have another $25 anonymous donation, which puts us up to... $1,230, just $270 more to go. Um, and yeah, that will get us all three of the different uh, incentives for Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep. Come on, y'all, we can do it. Yeah, let's do it, folks. Now we can yeah. really use your support. And, you have uh, around 20-ish uh, minutes, hopefully. So get those in. I forgot about this part. Yeah. <laughs> I like straight up forgot. Literally, we are walking in a circle for plot. Yeah. That is what's happening. There's like a treasure map or something, and Aqua's going in a circle to help find it. We're going to go down here, because there's a Thundaga chest, which we want. All stories exclusive uh, content right here. Riveting stuff. I'm just going to pop on over here. It's possible to get a triple volley when you uh, go into all three of these pixie dust with the same thing. I'm really bad at it, so... I do like the strat to attack to like, cut uh, off your height, I'll though. I'll do, do the menu later. I typically do the menu here. Because I do want double flight equipped, I'll do the menu later. That's uh, the hesitation. This is... Because you have to... thing to realize with this game is we mostly run ILs in the grand scheme of things. Like, we usually run individual character stories. And that's, like, 90% of what is uh, run at any given time. So whenever you do all story stuff, which you could argue is the true any percent, like <laughs> the menus can get a little jumbled and then, you know, things get a little all over the place, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, Vanitas, I need everyone to count with me. Every time Vanitas gets staggered, I need you to count. We are counting to 10. One. Nope, that nope. one doesn't count. Anytime he dodges. Nope. Or just ignores it for some Two. reason. Two. <laughs> Three. Three. Nope. 
Nope. This is uh, four. Four. Benitas is still a jerk. This is his payback for what we did <laughs> with the magnets. Five. 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 Six. Six. This is RNG, by the way. <laughs> Seven. 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 Eight. Eight. Nine. Nine. The okay. magnet and how, how. the ten staggers cause him to dive, and the spell weaver will kill him. Nice. The Ignite does a little bit of damage, and that helps. We mainly just want to get him into that attack, so the Spell Weaver will do its thing. Now we learned Ghost Drive, which is great, except it isn't, but we'll see later. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll ghost Drive, later. Ghost Drive, Ghost Drive, Ghost Drive. It's Why? cool. It is cool. It's cool. It That's, is cool. We can give it that. <laughs> I will grant it, it is cool. Yep. It's also bad, but it's cool. <laughs> yeah. If you're in the bad things, uh, it's cool. <laughs> Okay, so, Mysterious Tower, uh, normally in any Aqua run, this is a couple cutscenes, but we actually want a couple chests in this world. There's a Mega Elixir, which we were using as a fancy balloon letter, it will give us our D-Link back, and there's a Thundaga. We do love our Magnet Thunders. Or is it a Magnaga? It's a Magnaga. Also good. So, we're going to grab those things, walk on over. Skip a couple uh, plot things. Is is the Mega Elixir up top? Because you definitely got a crystal, not a Mega Elixir. Um, whoops. I got <laughs> You might have opened the wrong chest. I'll buy one. Okay. <laughs> it's also, we just use it as a balloon letter anyway, so I'm not concerned. Sure. It's all good. Right. So we're going to go into Aqua's final fights now. And uh, the Tornadoes we do actually have to talk about with Aqua, because Ven can just dodge it with Super Glide really easy. Terra can dodge it with his normal dodge really easy. Aqua, if you mess up one cartwheel, it's very easy to get caught by the Tornado and do a whole big old fight you really, really, really don't want to do. It's not fun for anyone involved. So what we're going to do is we're going to go close to this little tornado. It's going to aggro onto us. The second we go close to the next one, the last one stops aggroing and go on like that. And because of the change in aggro, uh, none of them can move quite fast enough to catch us. Again, if we turned the camera around, those things would be right up on you. <laughs> it's scary. It is certainly scary. Okay, let's buy. Let's make up for uh, that chest. Like, I want that, and I want that. That is good. So, up we go to final fights. So, uh, we have an old friend we need to beat up again at the start here. Well, we have two old friends, you could say. <laughs> One old friend's uh, got a new haircut, you know? <laughs> but uh, say hi to Brig. Okay, so what we're going to do is um, Peter Pan has a funny ability where any damage you do while in the air fills up his finisher gauge quicker than anything on the ground. So if you jump and block, which Aqua's the only character who can do that, because she gets everything, Square, what are you doing? <laughs> Like, as you do that, it fills up Sword Bill really quickly, and then we're waiting for him to cycle through his attacks. He'll do that, he'll do uh, some shots in the air again, we'll do some shots on the ground again, and then we'll do the attack where he holds still and we can just Sword Bill him. Because the main thing of Sword Bill is we need the enemy to hold still. Nice. As long as <laughs> so the enemy fast. is holding still, Every, all of the things hit and we're happy. Mm -hmm. If they're moving, then the sword bill can start whiffing and then we start having problems. So that's the big thing. Now, this is a horrifying no Yeah, good, I thought so, just fight. checking. <laughs> Sorry, we had a weird audio glitch over here, but yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so, this is a horrible, no good, horrifying, I'll probably die fight, Sonic. So what? Uh, I thought you were here, in fact, you should make me react to come out of here. I have a spell that that we missed his cyber. That way you uh, can cyber from here. And then once that is over, he's gonna probably hit that we missed with like physical attacks and like you kind of fill up that cyber more. Uh, that way you can just cyber from again before his desperation move. Please attack. 
Thank okay. you. Good. Oh, come on. Uh, I might be dead here. If you're at 1 HP, you still have to go for the Spell Weaver, and uh, if he immediately attacks, I could die. I'm going to mash out the Mickey thing. Just try to stay alive. Mickey, you actually were useful, although I think I'm dead. Uh, yeah, oh. yep, yep. So lame. He had the lingering. That's the thing. If you're at 1 HP and he die dives, you just die. Mm. There's literally nothing you can do about it. So all you can do is try to not be at 1 HP, and you saw how much he can just kind of be a dick about it. Yeah. Like, Renewal Barrier is really great, but just like the other block uh, commands, you still need the enemy to actually attack you at the right time in order to be able to get your health back with it. So there's only one Kira equipped right now, I believe, and thus if... If that's on cooldown, your only way to heal is if the boss decides to attack you in a way that you can block it. Okay, so again, we'll dive. We'll use the iframes and the damage because both those things are good. Mickey dying is actually what I want because I want to use Ignites to hit him a certain amount of times. It's a weird, hard to keep track of stagger system I couldn't show off anyway, where if you hit him an exact amount of times, it's possible for him to dive again before he does this. And if you get that luck, then this fight's really simple. And faster, but you know. You know how this run has gone at this point, right? <laughs> okay, that should do it. It's almost always three spell wheels. All right, there we go. <laughs> And that is our three main characters. Yeah, so that would be, you know, the end if we were just doing the three individual character any percents. But there are two more episodes to do, both of which are significantly shorter than any individual character run. Uh, final episode in particular is, is extremely short. Um, so I've got to make a save so we can load that. And then we get right into it. So you are starting to run out of time, folks. Let's get those donations in, please make that no heart boss incentive happen because we've got three fantastic bosses we'd like to fight and right now we're only fighting two of them and we do have a couple more donations that have come in we have ten dollars from taser 2 and we have ten dollars from yuki Tsukishiro. i'm sorry i just totally didn't say that right um, but that does put us up to twelve hundred and sixty dollars just 240 more to go y'all We've got a little bit more time, but we're going to run out soon. Seriously, that we can hit that so much faster than you think if you just commit to skipping one, you know, McDonald's sandwich or something <laughs> and toss it in a fiver uh, to a fantastic cause. Exclamation point, donate in chat or rpglimitbreak.com slash donate. Every dollar helps. Speaking mm. of, is anyone keeping track of how many times I died from uh, my donation? Five times. Five? Okay. Uh, I'll believe it. <laughs> and we actually have two more donations that have come in from anonymous donors. We have a hundred dollars, and we have another forty. Oh wow! <laughs> okay, I'm equipping the keyblade because it looks cool, and then we're going to equip uh, that. Um, there. Right, that's the. Other I'm glad thing I, I said something because I was pretty sure I didn't see you pick up the <laughs> elixir. Uh, power flash as well. Yeah. Yep. All right, so final episode is just a big old fight against this guy again. Mm -hmm. Except Aqua has a uh, very fun way to deal with him. Here's your guess. <laughs> so Counter Blast, which we picked up in a chest, makes this not too bad. We just counter him to build up the meter. Now I'm waiting for that attack. Bye. Please. Sword Bill always goes so much longer than I think it does because you normally see like a third of it. Ah. Uh, I've, uh, I've never seen that not kill. With yes. that attack, I've never seen that not kill. Interesting. <laughs> Weird that it's whiffing some or uh, something. Is Say, is it the Keyblade I put on because it looks cool? That that'd would be funny. Oh. That would be really funny. <laughs> but I've never touched left currently. Okay. Say, I pressed the button early? Yeah. Yeah, that would do it. 
I didn't want to do it here. This won't kill. It will get close. But this is good. Okay, there we go. So two-phase fight. We got a second one here. I mean, that was planned. It's like you deflect the second part of the dark ball, and he dies. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, it's supposed yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to use our balloon letter that we got. That's uh, what we want to see. We're going to pop into Pan. We're going to attack. I expect to get hit there, you honestly. Suplex. That is what I expect to happen. Mm. Yeah, I was going to say not quite there yet. And that's, that's ideal. The final episode's done. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, that's his DM attack where everything goes dark and the guy tries to suplex you. And we actually want to be the end <laughs> because he just stands there and takes it. Yeah, yeah, that's what, what I was saying like two hours ago at this point. How they're, It's kind of weird in this game. You actually can often damage the uh, bosses while they're using their desperation moves. Even though that's oftentimes in, throughout the, uh, the series an invulnerable move. Right, we only have uh, one more episode left, and it's not a horribly long one, so you gotta get those donations in quick. And we have some good news. We actually have enough to make that no heart fight happen. We've got 25. Awesome. Nice. Great job. I saw that donation total moving. I was, I was hoping. We have $25 from AG Deeds. Let's go fight no heart. Gibbon Trainer with $25. Here's to a great cause and a great runner. Let's get that no heart fight. $100 from Blue Xanath with no comment. And an unattended bag with $5. $5 donation train to no heart. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you so much. I will try my best not to die too much in that <laughs> I <know>. fight. <laughs> I was going to say, all of us are extremely happy about that, except for maybe one person up here. <laughs> uh... We'll see how happy I am when it goes. So, <laughs> Realm of Darkness. Uh, the magnets and thunders we've been hoarding to this point, we're going to use because magnets and thunders are really good. I like that there. I'm just um, trying to move my deck around so that I can get around, get around it uh, easier. And now the fire and the bind, you might remember from that one menu we're putting on. And... Uh, we can't skip any of this stuff. There's a bunch of these dark holes. This is the first time that Heartless show up in this game. It's like, it's all unversed before then. Now we get the Heartless, your Shadows, your uh, Neo Shadows, all that fun stuff. And there's not a heck of a lot to say about this because we're going to go to the ones that are required to take out. We're going to meld this Fire and the Bind we have together to get an Ignite. And we're going to uh, do this for a couple of minutes, really. It's like, so I wanted to take this time to just shout out some of the people who have done work on Birth by Sleep in the last 11 odd years since the original PSP release to just make this run the absolute madness that it is today. Just gotta do this menu real quick. <laughs> I have a list here. It's going to be hard to read and do the menu at the same time. The big <laughs> thing with this Ignite, it gives us a Leaf Bracer, which is very good. So we'll do that. And on with the shoutouts. Shoutouts to uh, Rebel Dragon 95 for all his work as a leaderboard mod and all his work developing the game. He's done a heck of a lot for a beginner, probably the best beginner player in the world. Like, Great dude. Uh, shouts to Rebel Watts for all kinds of Aqua stuff. Aqua Crit, Aqua Standard. Did all sorts of work with that. Shoutouts to uh, that, At Zero for a little bit of everything in this <laughs> game. Like a lot of the roots you're seeing goes back to PSP stuff that uh, he helped originate and brought into the thing. Same thing with uh, Sonic right behind me. But done a little bit of everything with this game, has his fingerprints on every single route in some way, shape, or form. Shoutouts to uh, Bloody Biscuits for his work on Aqua Crits back on the PS3 days, as well as finding that amazing hook strat <laughs> of N Crit by accident. Shoutouts to Faye for all their work on the PS3 era. Shoutouts to uh, Asa for the 
work in uh, Aqua Crit back in the day. Shouts to Grig for his work on Terra Crit. That's a lot of that route is my own, but a lot of it was based on stuff that he used to do back in the day, and we kind of brought back to do live things. Shouts to Wyatt for doing all sorts of stuff for this game, like marathons, routes, finding things, especially on beginner, all kinds of things. Shouts to Casa for doing also a lot of stuff for beginner. Uh, throughout this game. That's a B true for all of his work on uh, Bakwa Crit and Ben Crit, among some, uh, some other things. Made some good resources back in the day. Big shout outs to. Well, hard to do this. I was trying to hit. Do an uh, attack stall. Do an attack stall, yeah. and I forgot Ghost Drive's a thing. So remember so... how cool this thing is? <laughs> yeah, Ghost Drive, that's a thing. It's a, this is what happens when you uh, read notes <laughs> and try to do some movement tech at the same time. Shout outs to uh, Miss Master for his work on uh, Ven Crit over the years. Yeah, shout outs to uh, Mika Shu, uh, to Gu Chonin. I'm so sorry. <laughs> for work on uh, Ben Crit and being the first person to do uh, Mirage Arena speedruns over the years. Shout out to uh, Shib for, uh, for a lot of Aqua stuff and uh, Ben Crit stuff. Shout out to Zetris for some Ben Crit stuff over the years. Shout out to Punchy for that one loser first drop <laughs> in uh, Ben Crit uh, that you saw. Shout out to Abandon for doing a bunch of beginner stuff. Shouts to uh, Nanner for being just the dude with Aqua. Like, everything Aqua is so incredibly good. Shouts to uh, Cyberman for a lot of uh, PSP stuff he did back in the day. I wanted Double Fight equipped, and I made a note that I was going to do that, and then I didn't do it. Yeah, it's funny I, how that works. I remember that too, and because you did the menu, I just assumed you had already done it. <laughs> yeah, it's funny yeah. how that works. Like, uh, yeah, shoutouts to uh, you. Yeah, Yugo uh, Nuku for his uh, beginner contributions. I hope I didn't butcher that. Shouts to uh, Rupa for his PSP level one. Again, that's back when EXP Zero wasn't busted like this. So, <laughs> like, absolute mad lad with that. Shouts to uh, Kirby Sora and uh, Texas Grandma for their um, contributions to the Terra Crit route that you got to see today with uh, a little bit of VR stuff. Thanks, Shit. Thanks. Shoutouts to Dessa for doing a heck of a lot with this game, every category, including really routing out the 100% categories. Shoutouts to Marvin Long for for um, helping a lot with uh, Aqua Beginner. Shoutouts to Essentia for their work on PSP back in the day. Yeah, Shoutouts to uh, Game Brain for their work as a leaderboard mod and uh, PSP level one back in the day. And back in the day, and shout outs to uh, anyone else who I've missed who touched this game, helped this game, was a part of this community. Like, I mean, it's a great group of people, and it really has made this game special. And it feels really special to sh be able to show off a category where you get to show a little bit of everything that has gone into this game. Mm. So, yeah, thank big, you. Big all. shout outs to everybody. Okay. I, and now I only really have time to do this once, so we're going to try to line up here. Double jump, traps, air slide. Yep. Ah, uh, so not the wrong, that was not the right spot. Yep, uh, yep. The, so this is what a, happens uh, when you try to focus on multiple things at the <laughs> same time. There's, if you uh, do things very precisely, you can get around the uh, get around the fight triggers for all of this. Uh, instead, we'll just take care of it. Yeah, the the, the this world. fight in particular. It's one of the few, like, sequence breaks that skips an entire fight in this game, as opposed to, like, some of the, the smaller ones we were doing for chess and whatnot. Yeah, but it's not a particularly hard fight. It just saves, like, 30 seconds if you can skip it. Not the end of the world. But, uh... You can get one more uh, promotion in before we go to the final five of the run. Uh, we do have some uh, donations that have come through. We have a $40 anonymous donation with the comment, Waga Ken, fellow travelers, wishing plenty of good luck and or Kates in the following Octopath run to Sanjin. We have another $50 anonymous donation with no comment, a $100 anonymous donation with no comment, and one more anonymous donation for $100 that says no fight heart. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. 
Yeah, thank you so much for your donations, guys. Keep them coming throughout the events. We have a lot more fun stuff happening, so please keep those coming. Be sure to support the rest of the runners. And if you like Kingdom Hearts, uh, end of the week, <laughs> there will be more Kingdom Hearts for you. I yep. promise that much. All right, so final boss of the run. Uh, I'd argue maybe slightly anticlimactic. Yeah, the... but we get those extra optional super bosses uh, instead, so that's really good. Uh, but yeah, th this fight is mostly uh, just trying to get ignites on it and not die uh, for a lot of it. Um, this first phase, you kind of see from the perspective of the boss several times. You actually can like move around while this is happening and everything. Um, and you're just trying to block attacks and continue to refresh ignites because for some reason, just most of the good EXP zero strats don't work on this boss. I think like all of them don't work on yeah, this boss. For some really. reason, the EXP zero like damage bust buff, damage boost doesn't work on some bosses, usually in like Mirage Arena and like super end game areas, but this is one of them. It just doesn't work. Don't know why. Mm -hmm. So a few ignites, he'll uh, stop doing the whole first person shenanigans. And you can see he's a good boy <laughs> who uh, is just jumping around and really being a nuisance, as it were. He just Ooh. wants to play. <laughs> That's a good dodge. Uh, okay, so both cures are on cooldown, which is always a little scary. This is boss moves around wildly, as you can tell. Yeah, the um, good boy uh, jumps around a lot, which makes it hard to keep the ignites on him and can make it very easy to get wombo combo. Yeah, a couple important things to note about this. So we haven't really brought it up until now, but ignite, uh, you cannot use multiple ignites to stack damage. Uh, instead, if you used an ignite command on an enemy that's already being hit by ignite, it would just restart the ignite cooldown or the ignite like timer on them. Um, so ideally, Pest wants to be able to use it to just make sure that the boss is always taking damage from Ignite. I believe he has four of them equipped, so yep. they should come off cooldown very quickly. I uh, can use them a little early if he suspects the boss is going to attack in such a way that he, he yeah. wouldn't be able to like reset the timer or something like that. Um, and another big thing is that uh, Pest has talked about getting Leaf Bracer earlier, specifically for this fight. Leaf Bracer makes it so that whenever you use a cure spell, you are actually unable to be damaged while using the spell. You can get hit immediately after the spell and get thrown right back to one HP as we saw already, but it means that as long as Pest is able to start a cure, he will be able to get that health and, uh, and not die even if he was sitting at one HP. Yep, there's one more phase where uh, he'll go ludicrous speed on us. I did like two of those ignites with those. So. Anyone who understands the reference, uh, <laughs> just, yeah, yeah it's DM, uh, big old the ludicrous speed dude, and uh, we're going to do a, just a little more of the dodging and the ignites. Hopefully, I live and time will be on final hit. Yeah, at this point, I believe this cartwheel is like max or near max yeah, level. Yeah, it's max level, so we have a lot of iframes. Yeah, the the movement commands actually do level up just like a lot of your others, yeah. uh, and they uh, in it increases the iframes on yeah. them. Max uh, cartwheel isn't quite infinite iframes, but it can get close. Mm -hmm. It's going pretty well so far. Just need a few more. Which of the phases do you think is the scariest for you? Uh, uh, honestly, phase two, phase three, the attacks are slightly more predictable. So this is just slightly less scary, but the whole thing, like, the whole thing is like, it's not a super hard fight, but you make a single mistake, he can and will wombo combo you to death. So you cannot take him lightly. Yeah, I feel like there's a few scenarios too where you could just get hit twice back to back so both your cures are gone and then uh and then just get unlucky basically all right now can't finish off with ignite so gonna have to use something else oh. come on Time. okay good good job <laughs> oh, man. he tried to do it at the end he tried to, yeah. <laughs> to get you there so um, that was a pretty exact estimate for uh, <laughs> B for uh, BBS uh, doing whatever the heck it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. 
Oh boy. Now uh, enjoy the teaser for the game that we sort of got. <laughs> it's like BBS2 hype. Well, who are these people? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. I have no clue. Have you seen any of these people before? <laughs> It's always funny too is they just pull from like wildly different levels of quality uh <laughs> like old footage <laughs> uh, fun times fun times all right i'll let you see the end screen for just a second here there you go and let's fight some super bosses yeah yeah <clears throat> all right first up is our our appetizer <laughs> Like, yep, first up uh, is a uh, good old Vanitas Remnant. He's most most notorious for curing whenever you cure. That's kind of his primary gimmick. Uh, also, I'm show you the uh, stats. We are on level one. This is uh, critical mode. I'm sure you can show that somewhere. There it is. And we are level one. This is critical mode. Um, yeah, and choose the deck. We want this awesome looking deck right here. <laughs> and let's, yeah, his most notorious thing is he'll cure whenever you'll, you'll cure. Uh, we don't have a cure on our deck. We have a very specific thing on our deck, which I think I'm going to let it speak for it. <laughs> okay. And if I remember correctly, I think you said you were doing these on Terra just because you think it's a little more difficult. Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, th that is a fact, but uh, <laughs> I don't know if I said it. Okay. Just uh, over here. Where are you, bud? There you are. <laughs> yeah, so it turns out Strike Raid can go through walls, or at least this specific one. <laughs> You know how y'all wanted to see this fight? Well, we didn't really say we were going to let you see it. <laughs> Wait, there's a fight? <laughs> this is actually just the wrong warp to the end. You have to stand in front of this particular rock and strike rate 80 times. No, we're attacking the rock, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the only thing I'm doing is I'm letting him move every now and again. This is just the trailer for so, Black uh, Adam, so if anybody needs to go see that movie. Like, the main thing I'm doing is I'm letting him move every so often, because the strike raid is actually moving him backward, and there is a limited range on it, so I want to make sure it can all hit. But hey, you get to listen to the awesome soundtrack. That's true. It is a pretty awesome so pretty awesome song. Like, I think most songs in this game are pretty awesome, but this one's really good. And while we have a second here, um, do I have time to just shout out a little bit about our next run? Uh, you'll have a second as soon as this boss is dead. Almost, almost done. I wonder what he's going to do next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is just so silly. <laughs> you said you wanted me to kill him, right? <laughs> Sometimes you got to show up the cheese strategies. One more... Yeah, nice. <laughs> now would be a great time to let us know about the next run. Uh, so we do have Octopath Traveler coming up for our next run. Uh, we do have a few bed wars going on for that. Uh, the first is to choose the starting Traveler and the speedrun category for the run. Right now, Primrose is in the lead with an amount of $245. But Olberek is behind with $111. Uh, so if you want to see a specific character, you need to get those bids in very soon. And then we also have the voice acting language. Right now we have $65 for Japanese and $60 for English. So very, very close race there. Awesome. So uh, say hi to Mark Hamill in some really <laughs> cool armor. So this is really our big appetizer fight, because uh, remember Fabra's and the whole ice cream thing? So Final Mix added a command style called Rhythm Mixer, which you can get into with these uh, ice creams here. And Rhythm Mixer gives you this finisher, where uh, I'd like him to come over here. 
Uh, he's DMing. That's <laughs> Where uh, it can do a lot of damage if he's not being a little, you know, diva about it. So thankfully, once more, being very handy right here. Yeah, you can take some punishment, Terra. It's fine. Anyway, oh. now we can see the damage. And if he wants to, uh, there, <laughs> there we, go. we go. Rhythm Mixer is a uh, pretty strong. I was worried about that. Yeah, that's <laughs> that can happen. That can happen. Yeah, going into a going, going into, into it at one, H H one HP. <laughs> that can happen. Yeah, we're all good. It's like just load them up. Load him up, do it again. Because <laughs> uh, if he wants to play along where the mixer's really good. <laughs> yeah. Now, can we, can I count on one hand how many things have played along? <laughs> it's pretty much just Hades and Ice Titan. <laughs> uh, yeah, that played along pretty all right. There we go. Now you can see how much Rhythm Mixer yeah, it's pretty ridiculous, honestly. That's fine. I don't care. <laughs> I will heal in your face because I have... Uh, I don't really want to see the... Okay, that's fine. I thought it was something else. And it's a really cool fight, but... Uh, this is to uh, get you ready for No Heart because... This is really the only meaningful way we can try to deal with No Heart. I just want you to see the absolute power of this nonsense. Hi, dude. Uh, there shouldn't have a hitbox? Yeah. Hi, dude. <laughs> can you not teleport behind me? <laughs> okay. Not 1 HP, and he's also probably just going to die here, so it'll be fine. Yep. Nice, okay. <laughs> All right, and now for uh, the one I maybe won't beat. We'll see. <laughs> no heart. No heart either Wombo combos you right away. It's like you uh, kill him in like 90 seconds, or uh, you just run out of ways to deal damage. It's usually one of those. Yeah, it's brutal. So hopefully, but hopefully it'll go well. It's at least better than it used to be. Back on PSP, like Mirage Arena was a multiplayer thing. And this was not balanced to be beaten by a solo player at all. It's really, really, really bad. And this is where you're fighting uh, everyone's favorite enemy, Liam Neeson. <laughs> had, to, had to bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> One more time. So we're fighting uh, Xehanort's Keyblade here. It's creating a little wall. I'm just pause buffering to see uh, which of the... You see there's a little orange aura around the uh, button prompt, and that allows you to deal a lot more damage and just uh, actually use the Rhythm Mixer ability. So I'm just pause buffering to make sure I pick the right one. He's trolling quite a bit. I really want these to be dealing more because I have a limited amount of these for the entire fight because it's a multi-phase. Uh, because I went into the command yeah. style, it broke my second chance. Yeah, mm. so yeah, once more in second chance. This is actually true in a lot of the Kingdom Hearts games, like including Kingdom Hearts 2 and I think Cage 1, if it had something analogous, uh, where if you kind of change the state of your character, if that makes sense, in the middle of a combo, uh, even though you're still being hit by the same combo, your once more will like deactivate. Yeah. Yeah, so much of this is just up to how the E Blade. Like, I want moves. him to move because I want to go wherever he moves to, essentially. And then I want him to stay in this general area like this. Yeah, this, this is lot. exactly like, what I want to see. There's already the damage of two of them from last time, pretty much. The whole reason I'm using one and then attacking to build up the finisher is just because I have a limited amount of them that I can use in the fight. And I want to save as many for the actual fight as possible. This is the prelude. 
and you have to fight them every time you die, so... Pretty brutal. Okay, good. At least two pieces of that were landing. Because the main thing is just make sure you have more than one HP when this guy goes down, and make sure he goes down. Oh, that one's missing. Okay. This should do it. Nice, okay. okay phase one. Second phase. Now for the hard Oof. part. Yeah, we're, we're not out of the woods. And unlike, unlike a lot of the fights in the game so far, this two-phase fight starts you back at the first phase if you die. Oh, boy. Ooh. No. Ah. It was, like, so close to being off cooldown. Uh. And that's fine. I have a couple changes to this tech I want to make real quick. Like, we have... I'll give it one, maybe two more tries, depending on how much time we have. I did, did say there's a real possibility I don't beat this guy. It is brutal. Throwing on the third cure is a good idea here, if you're, since you're able to save some of those daisy sorbets in that first fight anyways. Yeah. In the first phase. But it means there's a very real chance I won't have enough to kill him, mm. so we shall see. Yeah, thankfully that was something that never really came up in the Aquas run, the fact that uh, that you didn't, like, that you only have a limited number of items um, that you can equip. Yeah, Aqua's pretty well optimized where that shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. It can be, but... Oh, come on. Thank you. Most of this is whipping. Yeah. Sad days. If it goes really bad, I will just, like, go do normal combos on him. But hopefully it doesn't get that bad. I love the little record scratch. Yeah. Scratch whenever you do an attack with Rhythm Mixer. <laughs> Pretty funny. Uh, buddy. Okay, okay. It's a good position. Ah, oh, uh, it was. <laughs> yeah, it was a good position. That's about as good as you can usually ask for. Uh, this part's just annoying and about trying to conserve resources more than anything else. It's uh, the next part that, yeah. Uh, oh, mm. just needed to move left. You might still have enough here? Oh, it's close. Like, I'm going to save it. Yeah. Don't blame you. Okay. Yeah, and I hope everybody was noticing just how fast this uh, this boss was moving around. Yeah, he used to move faster, if you can believe it. <laughs> really? Jeez. Oh, they actually nerfed this guy, and it's still ludicrous. Come on. Is it invulnerable in that attack yeah. or something? Yeah. I know, that's really bad. <laughs> oh. Okay, that was some good damage. Nice. Oh, stay right there, stay right there, that's excellent.
So again, critical health is not necessarily... It really is no scarier than full health for the most part. All that matters is having more than one HP. He's invulnerable during this, isn't he? Mm -hmm. I only have two more left oh. in me. Yeah, brutal. This fight's so rough. We'll have to get a, a call from production if we want to try it one more time or if we're good there. This one is just brutal. It is just something. Okay, we, we got one more time. All right. One more attempt. All right, no heart. Level one critical mode. Yeah. Get some energy in the Twitch chat as well. Yeah, tell him to be nice. <laughs> but yeah, the wall just isn't too much to worry about. The problem is phase two is just complete and utter RNG. That's like you saw him do the attack where he had like his little Keyblade shield out and that can eat a lot of damage and like so much. So much of it is random. If you get really lucky, he'll karate try to karate kick you into oblivion and that you can deal with really well with uh, the rhythm mixer. Okay. Very fast first phase that time. Yeah, that means very little. See how much damage it can do if he plays nice. Yeah. Uh, am I dead? I don't know. Yeah. I, I think there was nothing you could have done about I, that. I don't think there's anything yeah. I could have done there. That was a good death. Yeah. Regardless of that, that's what it, for. It is. Yeah, because, I mean, it knocked you into the air. You can't use Kiraga, right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well. Well, that's no hearts. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> but Still, uh, thank you so one. much for your donations. It all went to a great cause. Yeah, but apologize for that. Hopefully next time. <laughs> Still fantastic run. It was super fun getting to see all, all the stories back to back, see how it all changes and everything. Great. So great job, Pess. Yeah, thanks so much for watching. Like tons of resources on SRC, Discord. Uh, my YouTube channel has tutorials and stuff. So if you're interested in anything you saw, like Aqua Crit's a good place to start, uh, go check it out. And yeah, thanks for having me, um, guys. Thanks for all the donations and uh, have a great week. And thank you so much. Um, again, that was Pessilist with Kingdom Hearts Birth by Sleep Critical Mode All Stories. And we are getting ready to go into an ad, um, but we will have the Octopath run coming up shortly.
And we're going to go into that ad break now. Stay tuned, and we'll have more content for you shortly.
Okay, y'all, and we have a couple more donations that have come in in the last couple of minutes. We have the Kitty Cat with a donation of one or twelve dollars and thirty-four cents. It's been awesome seeing all the support for Nami this week. Let's keep it up, everyone. We have a fifty-dollar donation from Wells, a five-dollar donation from Hand Pan. Uh, a 500 donation from Atla Biscuit saying Woo! Team Primrose. We have, we have another $10 donation from Groucho Barks saying when you come to an eight prong fork in the path, take Primrose. We have another $254 from Wells saying good luck Sanjan. And a $50 donation from Ardanian Soldier. Thanks so much, y'all, for all your generosity.